Have you ever sailed across an ocean on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight, without even the possibility of sighting land for days to come? To stand at the helm of your destiny. I want that one more time. I want another meal in Paris. Microphone check. I want another bottle of wine. You guys hear me okay? Let me know in the chat if you guys hear me. Stand on testing. summits and smoke testing. Cubans and feel the sun on my face for as long as I can. Microphone check. No microphone. Okay, good. Testing. Testing. All right. Right All before right. we get into this, oh. don't forget, head on over to my Patreon. It's only $10 a month, and you do get access to my private members area with hundreds and hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. It's awfully loud, huh? Can you guys hear me? Let me know in chat if you guys can hear me. We get this all set up here. Am I quiet? Pretty quiet? Oh, echo. Why is there an echo? No more echo. Okay. Turn this down. Not loud. Seems loud, huh? Uh, is there an echo? You guys let me know. That's so darn... Oh, that's why it's loud. Things cranked up there. Testing. I have an echo. Do I have an echo? Stefan, you can hear me. Do I have an echo? No echo. That's what I'm talking about, buddy. Thanks, my man. I sound funny uh, in my ears. Robert, how's it going? It would appear my last uh, couple videos upset some people. All right, let's jump right into it. So today I want to talk about buying a used sailboat and what all uh, comes with that. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is your resale value when it comes to buying a used vessel. Scott, what's up, my man? Sound like a tin can. Yeah, I have some sort of a... Oh, let me, let me fix this. Hold on. Uh, testing, testing, testing. Oh, there's two of them. Hold on. Apparently. What if I get rid of this one? Testing. There we go. Now it should sound better. The Stefan? Steven? Sound better? Less like a trash can? Oh. Let me know. Then I'll get rolling here. No echo, but it sounds funny. It still sound funny, Gypsy? And I know it did. Three of these or something. Yep, that one. Much better. Yeah. I haven't live streamed in a while. For some reason. Uh, more microphones set up than I do. Okay, let's get rolling here. I hop back to a different screen and I have a funny sound. Just let me know in the chat. Okay. The first thing I want to talk about today is your resale value once you buy a used sailboat. Now, I often hear a lot of stuff uh, about how so-called modern production boats don't hold their value at all and they're a terrible buy and they're just going to break in two seconds. So I want to look at a couple of things and show you some examples here uh, of what exactly I'm actually talking about. So hop right on over there. Boom. Now, I'm sure... You guys are all familiar with this channel. Let me know in the chat. Uh, let me double check this microphone thing. Okay. yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm sure that you guys are all familiar with this channel, Sailing the Vagabond. Now, these are probably the most successful as far as a business goes when it comes to a YouTube sailing channel. And what they have posted on YouTube started about eight years ago. It was actually about nine, but they've since deleted a lot of their videos. Now, these guys are probably the most successful as far as a business oriented YouTube channel goes. Oh, here we go. Um, 
And so they started about eight years ago. Now the vessel they started on is a Beneteau Oceanus Cycles. That's this one right here. You see, La Vagabond. Boom. And then there he is, Mr. Fancy Pants himself. Now, the boat they started on is this boat. It's a Beneteau Cyclades 43.4. Now, when he bought that boat about a decade ago, that boat he purchased for right around $100,000, uh, if I remember correctly. And as you can see, here we are a decade later, the boat still sells for $100,000 because these vessels can and will hold their value extremely well. And they are more than capable of crossing oceans and taking you anywhere in the world that you want to go. Now, when it comes to these old blue water cruisers, a lot of those were very, very slow, heavy vessels. And that was due to the kind of technology that we had back then. Now, you couldn't predict the weather, the weather nearly as good as you can now. Uh, oftentimes, things would pop up out of nowhere. But with our technology that has increased so much, it's not that way anymore. So... For hundred grand, you can get a nice boat like this. Now, if we want to look at what's it actually working with. Now, you can see here, it's a Cyclades 43.3. Now, if you ever need to figure out the most basic information on a sailboat, head on over to sailboatdata.com and look up that vessel. That's where you're going to find out all the basics, the length of the waterline, when it was first built, things like that. Now, if we look at the Cyclades, she's got a length overall of 43.5 feet and a length at the waterline of 40.65 feet. Now, the way you can think about that, your length at the waterline and your beam, that's basically your livable space on board. So between those two numbers, I like to keep it as low of a difference as I possibly can. Ideally, under three feet, five foot is about my personal maximum that I would go when it comes to buying a sailboat. Now, she has a beam of 14 and a half feet once you get above 13.5 feet, you're doing really, really good on the beam of your vessel. Then if you can keep that length of the waterline versus length overall, very, very small discrepancy, you, my friend, are doing very, very well. <laughs> like I said, so here's that boat. Now I'm just bringing this up as an example of the kind of resale you can expect to get on a vessel in five or 10 years if you buy the right vessel to start with and you take care of the vessel. Now, I'm going to hop on over and pop up a couple of other things right after I get done looking what else we've got going on here. Yeah, 125 is the most. 100K is the least expensive. <laughs> Give me one second while I pull up some things here. Have you ever sailed across an ocean? on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight, without even the possibility of sighting land for days to come. To stand at the helm of your destiny. I want that one more time. I want another meal in Paris. So gut mode, it really depends um, on what your budget is, you know, because you can get pretty crazy when it comes to those types of things. Um, and you can be much, much more reasonable. So it would depend on your budget. So today I want to take a look here at the current used sailboat market. I got some pretty basic criteria going on. $20,000 to $300,000. I probably won't make it all the way to $300,000, but we're going to start the low side at $20,000. Now I'm going to go over here. Oh, they got rid of it. Where did it go? Country. That's what I'm looking for. United States. All right. So we're going to take a look, starting at 20K and work our way up. Now I currently also have a consulting member. Um, who's looking at some boats. Now his budget's right around $100,000, $130,000. And he's got some classic plastics picked out. Now, I'm gonna go over those today when we get up to that price range. Uh, so you guys can kind of see the what I think of the vessels that he has currently chosen. Um, and then we're gonna go from there. One second. 
Have you ever sailed across an ocean? You know, I should have uh, surrounded by sea with no land in sight, without even the possibility just had some normal B days to come. Instead of this intro talk here. Bam. All right. So come. Your budget's 25. 35k. All right, let's pop this up here. Bam. There we go. Well, gump mode. I'm gonna start right at 20k, my man. So we're gonna take a look at some vessels here in this price range. Now, for 20k, it can be a bit difficult to get a full-time liveaboard cruiser. You're often going to be stuck with uh, these older vessels. Now, I don't like older vessels. <laughs> Tranquility with screensaver. Um, now, I don't like older vessels. I always suggest getting as new as you possibly can. Uh, and if it's something you really want to do full time, make sure you get yourself a boat you can grow into versus out of. There's no reason to, uh, you know, buy boats that are incredibly old that are just going to be a bunch of work. And here's an example of exactly what I mean. Now you can see it's got a whole, you know, this is just an old boat. You know, it's a 1988. Darn thing's pushing 50 years old. Um, so you're going to have all of these kind of cosmetic issues. But those cosmetic issues on these 30, 40, 50 year old boats, they actually go down to the foundation of the vessel. A lot of times they will, you know, kind of be a polished quote unquote turd, I guess we could say. Um, and then you get on it and then everything is a mess. The wiring's a rat's nest, the bilge pump, you know, it just has all these foundational issues. So for 20 K, you know, you just want to try to get as new as you can. Um, but it's difficult it's 20k now i don't like boats with giant bow sprits like this the marina is going to charge you for that and that's why i don't like it i want to get my length of the waterline versus length overall as close as i can like i mentioned at the start of the video these giant bow sprits they're going to cost you a ton of money in the long run and you really don't need them nowadays uh we got the classic ericsson now, i'm not saying these boats are bad boats they're just not a boat that i would recommend here's a little Tartan. Tartans are notoriously good boats. Um, the newer ones are really, really expensive. These older ones, more often than not, they have a lot of deck rot on them. Uh, a lot of, damp, you know, seeping water into the chain planes. A lot of moisture in the deck. Uh, and that's going to be a thing on all boats of this age. Because eventually, that water is going to work its way into your vessel. Now, let's see here. Now, this is what I'm talking about by a polished, uh, you know. Oh, one second. ABC, what's up, my man? Long time no see. Long time no live stream, huh? Yeah, buddy. Now, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, polished. Now, this has some things. See, this is sailboat data. Exactly what I mentioned. Yeah, not li Yeah, you could make it work if you were single. No problem. But uh, not going to be the most comfy thing. Now, this is what I mean. So, this all looks pretty and clean, and you can get really, really enticed by this type of stuff if this is what you're after. And you can really get blinded by it because it looks pretty and clean. We can use, um, it actually is a sailing channel. Uh, have you well, ever sailed across I'll an example here? One second. I want another meal and power as I can. There we go. Okay. Let me pull up something. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Right before we get into this, don't forget, head on over to my patron. It's only $10 a month and you do get access to my private member. Boom. Now, I'm sure that you guys are all familiar with these people. I can't think of the what their boat is off the top of my head. But again, this is the same thing. Uh, started years ago. They're on an absolute dumpster. And they did this refit. And everybody focuses fuzzy. Uh, Gordon, you can change the um, what it is streaming at. The little three dots right underneath. Make sure. No, it's not the three dots. What's it under? Uh, the little cog wheel. When you hover over it, it'll default sometimes to like 360. I'm actually streaming in HD. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can up. Now, started with a dumpster boat. Look at this. I mean, this is just insane. Let me get an ad here, probably. Oh, no ad. Let's see. Here's the dumpster boat. Boom, boom, boom. Here's the dumpster boat. Blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
they did all this work and everybody was like wow you did such a great job you're so amazing how wonderful but this was just a polished turd because here they are several years later and they're having to do the same thing since the entire vessel is flexing and it has all these issues but that's what i'm talking about don't get caught up in a cosmetically pretty vessel i'm on my phone picture looks good awesome let me pull that back up boom Oh. Yeah, it'll sometimes, like, mine will sometimes default to, uh, you know, like, whatever that is, 320 or something. Um, so I would be really, really leery of vessels in this age range. I mean, you're pushing 50 years old. They can look cosmetically pretty and clean. That doesn't mean that they're good. Uh, uh, and it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. So for the 20, now, Catalinas are notoriously... Let's say they have they have a really really big fan club. Uh, doesn't make them good or bad. They definitely have a fan club. Um, they hold up well though. Oddly enough, over time, they'll get the job done. So so far out of these older vessels in this 20k range, this Catalina just out quick glance. You don't have a giant bowsprit. Not gonna take up a bunch of extra space. It's small, of course, it's a 30 footer. But for 20 grand. I mean, that could get you all over the Caribbean. That could get you to the Bahamas. That could do a lot of uh, stuff for you. It's definitely better than these Tartans. Ba -dum -bum -bum. I'm going to pack it. Yeah, that Catalina is probably the best one so far. Don't forget, ladies and gents, likes are free. Unless, of course, you came to hear me live because of my last handful of videos where I uh talked about a bunch of youtubers and upset a bunch of people uh if you're just here hoping to hate on me i hope i hope it brings you joy uh let's see another catalina and because catalinas have such a fan club they're generally well taken care of not always california ones can be pretty dicey um yeah, I mean, not... I would probably buy a Hobie before I would buy a... You know, but again, it depends on what you're doing, where you're going, what your budget is. You know, these boats will get you all over the Bahamas and stuff. You don't have a lot of cockpit space. In and out of the vessel is going to be a pain in the rump because you have a canoe stern, basically. Uh, this one, again, seems pretty well taken care of. Okay, come on. That world. Ready, set, go. Wait, on my internet. How's your guys' week going? Let me know. A lot of people hate on the old hunters. I don't mind them. Uh, oddly enough, you get a great bang for your buck. I would take this hunter probably over those. Um... Yeah, true. True that, Gump. True that. I'm late. Didn't miss much. Any wooden boat? No. My... Uh, Ferro cement boats, my man, are a no-go at all cost. Um, no wooden boats mentioned. I don't really, I don't really recommend those, you know gonna be a ton of work you'll get like sailing uba no what is it sailing yaba i think Ooh, this boat sat a long time when you see boats like this that have sat like this that creates a lot of damage on the overall vessel all of your seals windows leaks door jams standing water that can cause a lot of problems um so this boat looks like trash i mean just the eyes and glass and just what i've seen so far you're gonna have like 20 grand just in cosmetic stuff Classic interior, wooden. Guy drinks a lot of Pepsi. Is that water just for looks? Nobody drinks that much water, do they? Hunter over Catalina, anytime. I mean, like, the new Catalinas are nice. They're just, wow, are they expensive. Dark Savant, thanks, my man. Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it. Just do it. Dark Savant, thanks, my man. Oh, yeah, they all go to Annapolis and pat each other on the back. They have that, there's that stupid uh, cruiser awards thing, and people are like dead serious about it. Um, They are uh, like, please vote for me, please. What? <laughs> they got some cool prizes, but still. Um, 
But yeah, so this hunter is a bit beat up. And the interior doesn't look that bad. Yeah, music I like. I like Janos. Janos are nice. I prefer Beneteau over Jano, but that's personal preference. Neither here nor there. See, this is a lot of interior in the hunters. Hunter 33.5. Yeah, there's like a Cruiser's Award thing. Uh, I might be able to pull it up. Uh, I'll pull it up in a few minutes. I'll show you. What else we got here? See, this is too old. 70s, in my opinion. Just too old of a vessel. 50s. Yikes. Ooh, that's a partial. One-fifth share. Uh, I delivered a boat. Uh, Genoa 519? Might have been a 509. Can't remember. From St. Martin to Puerto Rico and then back to the USVIs. Back to Puerto Rico. Just like two months ago. Made it to a live stream. And Tora, what's up? Whoops. Knocked over my... uh. So not a lot. There's a couple of okay Catalinas in the $20,000 category currently on the used market. That Hunter need a lot of work if you could, you know, chip away at the uh, cost there. Haggle. Um, tall rigs were notoriously for more sale area. Don't make much sense anymore. Pearsons. I'm just not a fan of their livable space on board. They are tiny, tiny boats. Which, if that's fine if you're a single guy, but when the uh, broker doesn't put any effort into putting up images, I instantly passed. Um, are these blue water boats? No, these are, we're just, Richard, we're just doing $20,000 to $300,000 in the current used sailboat market. So I'm just starting at the low end and working my way up and just giving you my thoughts on vessels as I go. Can I comment on the BNR rigging? So catamarans. Have no backstay. That's basically what a BNR is. Came out with Hunter. Initially, they won the Sunday race or something. I forgot the name of it off the top of my head. Um, they will get the job done. There's nothing wrong with that rig. It's designed by much more knowledgeable people than uh, myself and anybody else that you're going to hear talk about it. Um, to a guy. What's the way? Oh, the. <laughs> Oh, this guy? Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Just do it! Don't forget to super chat. Dark Savant is crushing it today with the super chats. Aluminum sales. Now... I like aluminum sailboats. They are incredibly expensive, obviously. Um, I forgot the name off the top of my head. There's that one out that's popular right now. I forgot the name of it. Um, and I, I would say it's only worth spending that kind of money. If you're going to do a very, very specific, specific type of sailing. So, you know, maybe in the Ant you know, Antarctica or something. Uh, maybe. But I just don't think the price, the, uh, that big, big price jump in aluminum boats is really worth it for the average sailor. So, ba -dum -bum -bum. yep. Oh, so, see, now we can get a Hunter 28, $22,000, but we move all the way up to a 1996. Everybody's going to go to Hunter. Wah, wah, wah. Um, Uh, so here we go. Thanks again, Dark Savant, for the uh, super chat, my man. Split junk rig for the win. True. Salty Safair, what's up, my man? Awesome, I have to start small cash. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have no experience sailing, but like you've seen YouTubers, you know, and it looks all amazing. Um, I would suggest getting on, you know, on Facebook, there's a crewing like a looking for crew type of a Facebook page. And I see all the time on there, like daily people are looking for crew, no experience necessary. Just pay your way. 
chipping on some of the boat costs. Um, you know, and they're doing crossings, Mediterranean, Bahamas, Caribbean, East Coast, West Coast, South Coast, uh, everything. But so here, now this is probably the best little Caribbean cruiser so far we've seen in the $20,000 mark. Got a nice little sugar scoop. Uh, access into and out of the vessel incredibly easy. You can fish off the back here. Uh, it is a small boat, so it's only a 28 footer, but you move all the way up to a 1998. Perfect for solo guy, single cruiser, wants to go kick back, live on the cheap for a year or two in the Caribbean. This would be phenomenal. <coughs> now, I'm not saying run out and buy it, but based off the listing so far, it'd be great for that. And it's incredibly ex inexpensive. It's 20K. Crew finder, Scott. Yes, that's. Yeah, but there's a Facebook page. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Let's hang out here. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. I also I went like viral on Facebook the other day on a sailing channel because uh, you know uh, people get mad at me. Let's see if I can find it. Dun, dun, dun. Nope, can't find it. I think I probably uh, left the group because I get tired of hearing people talk about they need crew. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so this Hunter so far, but on Facebook, Facebook page, there's like a crew finder thingy, uh, stuff like that. It's a freshwater lake in Michigan. What is? Oh, this, what? What are you talking about? Anyway, perfect little boat, solo sailor, cruise the Caribbean, spend a year or two, 22K, get the job done. Um... Good find, yeah. Oh, oh, it's the same. Okay, thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. I turned 18, 20 days ago, so I'm getting close to being able to... Nice. I wonder if it would be cheaper or quicker to build a house with a sailboat as its base. Uh, you buy a little houseboat, you know, for sure. Um, But yeah, this boat so far, by far the best in that. Uh, Bearded Weirdo, what's up, my man? Long time to see... Recently responded to a handful of ads on Crew Finder. Oh, no responses? Uh, I have a delivery coming up in November. I'm going from, uh, where am I going from? U.S. Virgin Islands to uh, North or South Carolina. Uh, I mean, I'll need crew if you're around, bearded. <coughs> you won't need crew, but I mean, you're more than welcome to come. What else do we got here? What else do we got? I just, I don't like these older boats. Now, when you buy an older vessel, it's, you're buying into multiple, multiple previous owners. And every boat owner has a specific way they thought things should be done. Um, and oftentimes you just run into a giant, giant rat's nest when it comes to those types of things. Pop this up. Bingo. Let me check some. I'm gonna check something. Hold on. All right. So uh, now these old days are popular. You'll you a lot of times you'll hear you'll hear people talk about these, but usually when you hear that, it's inexperienced sailors. And these boats kind of come to mind from their childhood or their neighbor, or maybe their dad had one. Uh, great boats for their time. Buying one of these today would make no sense. Um, now this one looks really really clean. It's only twenty two grand. O day 34. Now I'm going to pull up a couple of things. One second. What was it? Is it O day 34? Here we go. Nope, maybe. Nope. No. So you have a pretty big discrepancy in your length of waterline versus length overall. Um, it's a pretty big discrepancy. Only 241 of them built. Uh, again, great boats for their time. But these are not... You know, this isn't what... Uh, yeah. Looks pretty, though. I mean, they've done a decent little job there. Ba -dum -ba -ba. What's up, basic info? How's it going, my man? Ba -dum -ba -ba. And we're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. Uh, Beneteau first. This is more of a race boat. Uh, the first is a race boat. I don't like the older Beneteaus either. Just, uh, here's some 303. All right. That's the Hunter. 
So between these two, it's, I mean, it's, it's a no brainer. You would always take the Hunter 280 over the Hunter 26. Uh, same price, bigger boat. Um, and just within a couple of years of each other. Fun fact. When you acquire anything used, you, yes, usually, John. Very, very true. Bum, bum, bum. Shaken or bacon. Pearson Sloop. Oh, it gets all dry from uh, doing videos all day and talking and live stream. I'm going to get some honey. It's great. Honey. Bristol 32. Now, Bristol's were phenomenal boats in their day. Expo Frog. What's up, my man? Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Now, Bristol's were fantastic boats in their day. But you got the canoe stern here. Harder to get in and out of the vessel. Much, much smaller length of the waterline, as this picture shows in great detail. Um, so your livable space, again, your length of the waterline, roughly. And then this is a penguin shape, right? With the canoe stern. So it narrows at the stern, narrows at the bow. Penguins out in the middle, kind of like a pear. Um, so very, very small on the interior for the length overall on the vessel. So just keep, you got to keep those kind of things in mind. And this is a nightmare. Uh, I couldn't fit in that boat. 2019 are Tala, Tala, Tala and 20 cents now. Yeah, buddy. Um, so we're shaking, we're baking, 131. Bum, bum, bum. And then uh, I got a couple of boats to look at for a member as well. I'll do that while we're here. A lot of people talk about these, Eric. Again, I'm just, I'm not a big, big fan of inheriting someone else's problem. Like uh, John Q just said, yo, that's actually a cool idea. Thanks, man. I like the name. Money Pit Boating. Yeah, buddy. See, again, looks cosmetically nice, but keep in mind, 1984, almost 40 years old. So everything has a lifespan. Your fiberglass itself has a lifespan. Your deck step, uh, glass, engines, transmissions, seals. I mean, everything has a lifespan. And at 40 years, it's all but the actual fiberglass itself should have really at some point been replaced usually speaking a lot of people like the old woodwork i get it that's cool i prefer a is that somebody's teeth oh my lanta that's teeth right that's teeth for sure oh no it's not it's soap oh my i thought it was teeth i about lost my mind right there uh, i'll be back in san diego soon looking to do what can it help someone help me there you go i just had a boat surveyed Yesterday, surveyor was impressed. Pacific Seacraft, 2000. Freshwater stank and the smell stuck to you. Yeah, that's usually a problem with their water tanks. What size Pacific Seacraft, Murky? Out of curiosity, because I'll show you something really, really quick. It'll highlight something I'm talking about. It's just like, uh, this looks almost like, uh, what's his name? Sam Holmes' boat. Pacific Seacraft 31. Why a Pacific Seacraft 31? Um, so this is why I don't like Pacific Seacrafts. The length of the waterline versus length overall, you have a six foot discrepancy. This one's almost seven. Or this is this is seven. Um, uh, and a very, very, very small beam. First boat, Murky. I think how much how much was it, Murky? If you don't mind me asking, or what are they asking? A hundred and thirty-eight K. Are you out of your mind, my dude? <laughs> Absolutely not. It's a twenty-four foot boat. And it's old. Um yeah, I would say pass, but hey, you know. Different uh different strokes for different folks. Another one out there. Anyway. Um if it was me, I'd grab that little hunter, twenty eight bigger boat I'd grab that for 22k or whatever uh and i'd jam out for a season on that and kind of figure out what i wanted what i needed you won't lose any money on it um 
Especially if it's your first boat, might not be a bad thing to think about. Trailer, sailor, or a hunter. Hey, the wooden boat. Day 302. And we're cruising. We're shaking. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's just, just my personal opinion, my man. Take it or leave it. Um, I'm not a fan of Pacific Sea Crafts. They're too big of a discrepancy. Length of waterline versus length overall. Very, very small cramped interiors. Um, I think there's better boats out there. For 140k, there's definitely better boats out there. But again, just my just my personal opinion. And don't hesitate to ask if you guys have questions on specific boats. I'll more than happily give you my opinion. My opinion is not always uh, the nicest of opinions. I'm terrible at sugarcoating things. Uh, so keep that in mind. Don't get your feelers hurt. 128. Bye. So this is, I would still do that other 28. It's newer. One that we already passed. I'm not seeing much in the 20K range here. A lot of these O days. Like there's 232 O day 322s built and 229 of them are for sale. That should tell you something. And until first, remember, racer, Alan Packet. A lot of people talk about these again. Very, very outdated design. Great boats for their time in the 80s. This is a fantastic boat. Get anywhere you want to go. That's an awfully small boat for a full keel. She is going to rock and roll like no tomorrow. I've never been seasick in my life, but if I'm going to get seasick, it'd be on something like this one. Uh, little details to look for. So this might not seem like much, but rust around this down here. That just alludes to other issues on the vessel. Always keep that in mind. Uh, don't let the name of a vessel or brand uh, steer you in the wrong direction. True, it does help. All right. How's everybody doing? Got 100 people here. Those likes are free, ladies and gents. They're free all day, and I've only got 40 of them. Hit that like button. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, there goes my thing. Uh, in your opinion, what's the best and biggest trailer sailor? Uh, money pit boating, I, I'm i not really a trailer sailor guy. Uh, so to be completely honest, I don't have a lot of experience with trailer sailors. So I wouldn't feel comfortable giving you a recommendation on them. Uh, so I've just, I've never been a trailer sailor guy. Not that there's anything wrong with them. Uh, again, I would just go for the newest one I could afford, really. A lot of these Pearsons for sale. Why did Joshua... So basic info, the long bowsprit, it's normally to extend your sail plan. It allows you to throw your sail out there and get a much, much bigger sail area on your vessel. That's what it's for. Now, I would never, ever buy a boat with a big, big bowsprit. Um, they're a waste and you are going to pay a ton of money in marinas for it because they're going to charge you. If you get charged in marinas, your length overall, not your length of the waterline. So uh, now my chat is a little bit behind. So if I don't catch something, um, my highlighted chat seems to. Uh, to... Oh, maybe that was why. Uh, oh, I was doing top chat, not. That was clever. I'm in the Great Lakes now because he... Yeah, there'd be nothing wrong with that. That'd be super, super cool, my man. Oh, Dark Savant. Joined as an able seaman. Thanks, my dude. Trying to catch up on chat, sorry. Boom. Thank you, Dark Savant. We're just getting into sailing. Yeah, a trailer sailor might be a great option, you know. You just have to make sure you got somewhere to store it. You got a trailer and a rig that can bring it in somewhere with easy access, getting the boat into and out of the water. A lot of times trailer sailors sound good at first. You go take it out. It's a giant pain in the rump and then you don't do it again. Something to always consider that never ever gets talked about. Uh, I myself, that's why I've never been a trailer sailor guy. Too much of a pain in the butt for me personally. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. Just me personally. 
And so I find myself not going out. So I don't do trailer sailors. Doesn't mean they're bad. Perky, my man, the able seaman. Whoop, whoop. Guys, I can testify to what you're saying. I spent two years. For yeah, it's a terrible idea. Earl, early C. Terrible, terrible idea. Um, I mean, you never get out on the water. and These people run out and buy these boats, you know, thinking they're going to do one thing. The reality is 99% of your time is going to spend coastal cruising and island hopping. No matter what you're doing. You want to see the world? Fantastic. 99% of your time going to be coastal cruising and island hopping. You're doing Atlantic crossing one year, then you're going to sit over in the Mediterranean for a year or nine months. Um, and then maybe you cross back and then you're going to spend a year in the Caribbean. Island hopping, coastal cruising. Then maybe you're going to follow the Gulf Coast over or even south down to the ABC Islands, uh, hit the Panama Canal, then up the West Coast. Coastal cruising and island hopping. Maybe you're going to cross to Fiji. Once you get over there to that side of the world, you're going to wind up stopping for a year or two because you're going to be tired. Stuff wears on you. Since I'm in the market for a boat, I'll join. Thanks, my man. Scott, looking at my short list since 49, 2012. <coughs> since 49, huh? Let's pull that bad boy up. What do you mind is buying a Y90 right now? It's a 90 foot sailboat. Uh, a sense 50, you mean, Scott? What's going on with my stuff? I feel like I'm behind here. What am I missing? Mark Jackson. Spotted a 1984 Catalina 36 for AK. Nice, Mark. Nice. Uh, exceptional circumstances because the owner passed away unexpectedly and it was not in the market. Catalina has a great community. Yes. And that's what I was saying earlier, Mark. Catalina's, um, they do. They have a fantastic community. People love them. Um, yeah, my chat's a little bit behind. I apologize. So, Mark, sorry about that. Uh, yes. Great community for those, for sure. Not to mention older boats just weren't made to work on. Yeah, they're really a pain in the butt, Earl. Early, see? I keep calling you early. Earl, sorry. Uh, yeah, you can't get to anything on them. Scott, wouldn't worry about falling off the stern. Bring out another thousand. Yes, true. Um, all right, what I miss here? I feel like I'm missing stuff. But um, what I'm looking for? Uh, the sense. Who was looking at the sense? Sense forty nine. Sense forty nine. Sense fifty. Scott, is that what you meant? Sense fifty. Early C. Boom. Not there. Boom. Thanks, my man. Whoop, whoop. Thanks, dude. Uh, early. It's just like early morning. Gotcha. Uh, potentially dumb question. Why don't I hear about people sailing from Canadian coast to Iceland and over to Northern Europe? It's, just, it's the higher latitude crossing in the North Atlantic Ocean could be a bit more treacherous. Um, Michael. So that's why you won't hear it. There's certain routes to cross the Atlantic. That's not really one of them. Not that you can't do it, but different hazards involved. Uh, what are your thoughts on certifications? Um, it depends on the cost music. Now, it doesn't really help you with anything else. Um, it's not, I mean, if you can't get insurance, it might, you know, your insurance company is going to want you to hire a captain and have a captain on your boat for a week. So those certifications don't really help there because they don't look at that as real world experience. Um, so I would say it's really about the cost and like if it's just something you want to do and if you can get like a good deal on it, um, you know, versus I wouldn't run out and take like ASA 101 through 104 or anything. That's really, really expensive. I would be out being crew on somebody's boat, get on crew finder on Facebook or something. Um, Yeah, 50 ton license will help with insurance. Six pack license will help with insurance, but those certifications, not so much. Uh, bam, here we are, the Beneteau 50. One second, I gotta grab something. Hold on, please. I 
had my window open. And since I live in the tropics, Caribbean, it's always one sneaky little uh, mosquito that pops in. All right. So Scott said he is looking at this boat and he was worried about the open transom. Now, Scott, these seats fold down. It's not really open. There's also along the back here, there's going to be two lifelines that'll come. You're not going to fall out the back. Them getting swamped, that's really more of a sailor thing. It's more the captain's fault. If you don't know how to sail in a following sea, you can have that happen to you. I've seen it happen to some YouTubers. It's really user error. Uh, there's a certain angle you should hit those waves at if you're in a following sea, depending on your wind and your sail plan and what you're doing. Uh, not really an issue. I like the wide open concept because, again, 95% of your time, coastal cruising, island hopping, you're kicking back right back here, have lunch, throw some poles off. If you caught my last delivery, I caught like a seven foot shark off of a Genoa 50 footer. See, and this one's got these little things here, your little lifelines that go right here. So you're not going to fall out the back. Um, so don't, I wouldn't worry about that. But um, let me pull up the chat, see what else I missed. You're late, but hey, you're here, Patriot Canadian. Don't forget, ladies and gents, likes are free. There's over 100 people here watching, only 60 likes. Free information is the best information. That's the one. Yeah, I like those uh, Sense 50s. These are nice boats. There's a ton of room on them. Ton of room. This right here, you have access to your storage. It's actually your down cabin. Fantastic. The 473's got something like that on it as well. Very, very nice. Um, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of open concept vessels because I've sailed a lot. And I know that you spend 90% of your time out here, <laughs> uh, especially if you're in warm climates. A lot of people want to go after a center cockpit vessel. I would always say don't do that unless you live in a cold climate and only plan on sailing in a cold climate where you're going to spend a lot of time inside your vessel. Uh, anywhere else warm, you're going to spend all your time out here. Those cabins never get used. Most of the time, I'll sleep right here on a boat. I mean, even when I have cabins and stuff, I'll sleep outside in the cockpit. Um, it's just nicer. This is fantastic. I love this. Big, big fan. Giant fan. This is phenomenal. Yep. But again, personal preference. It's just the usability of these wide open concepts are fantastic. A lot of times people talk about not being able to cook underway. The reality is, even if you have an L-shaped galley, this is a long galley, but it's got this bench right here. But even if you have an L-shaped galley, the reality is it's a pain in the rump to cook while underway in a sailboat. If you have any kind of weather, it's a nightmare, uh, no matter what you're doing. I had a guy in one of my deliveries spill his coffee and then got all seasick. Was, uh, you know, boats bobbing. Is that a washer? Good job, man. Nice. Uh, ABC Ralph is recovering. Yeah. How's Ralph? Ralph was great on the, my delivery. Recovering from vocal cord surgery. Pretty quiet. Right. Oh, poor guy. He should have given me his DeLorean. I'm telling you. Sailors. Yeah, they're all open up cockpit. I mean, look at the Vendee Glow boats. They're giant open cockpits. Um, you just, you need that room. I mean, John, I'd grab whatever I could. It's like a basic chainer, trainer, sailboat. Just not something that's going to cost you a lot of money. Something you're not going to pour a bunch of money into. Boats like these, you're going to pour a bunch of money into. These Cape Dories and stuff. They're just too old. You know? Um, no, that's my humble opinion. Take it or leave it. 145DS. Yeah, I like the 145DS. I need something that's a gradual coming. Yeah. I mean, I like Dexalons, early C. Um, I just can't afford one. I can't run out and buy a Moody 41DS. That'd be my absolute boat. Moody 44DS. Be phenomenal. But I don't have like 800K or a million bucks to drop. <coughs> the dumbest thing I've seen somebody buy recently is... Uh, let me show you. I'll actually show you. Mr. Vintage in contract to sell a sweet. Let's go. Nice job, Mr. Vintage. Nice job. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's this trimaran these guys bought. Um, you know, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, anywho. Mr. Vintage. Yes, congrats. Congrats, my man. Uh, thanks for the super chat, Mr. Vintage. Keep those super chats rolling. That's how I bring these videos to you. And I would live stream more often. 
Um, like live stream doesn't really run ads or anything. So, uh, don't get paid. Hunter Vision 32. And don't forget, if you guys got questions on specific boats, I'd be happy to look them up for you. Uh, speaking of that, let me pull up. Now, I have a member who's currently looking at vessels. Now, he sent me some. And these are not the boats that I would recommend, but these are what he likes so far. But he's fairly new in the, uh, in the world of uh, boat shopping. Here's the first one. 1985 little... See, now I don't like catches. Uh, with modern sailboats, your sail plan's fine with your main sail and 140% Genoa on it. This adds a lot more running cost to the program here. Um, and you're not really, really going to get a lot of speed. Now, I can see why people like this. This is very, very classic. This is phenomenal woodwork. It's solid hardwood. Uh, I get it. You know, this reminds me of like a roll top desk, and I love roll top desks. Um, but. Again, a person has to think about exactly what type of sailing they're going to be doing. Is this your first live aboard boat? And you have dreams of adventure and you want to see the world. And, you know, somewhere along the lines, somebody said, or at one point, you know, you kind of followed the line of, I got to get one of these. These teak decks are a ton of upkeep. This is just, it's a really old vessel. Again, we're pushing 40, 50 years old lot of upkeep on these vessels the older they get the more costly it gets to run them a lot of that is just because of how they're designed now you've got a little tiny dodger here any kind of foul weather you're going to get hammered up here um there's no bimini <laughs> and again getting into and out of the vessel is kind of a pain in the butt yes you can design some things and build some things there to help with that but again it's just added cost a lot of lines on this a lot of running rigging a lot of standing rigging it uh, doesn't mean it's bad, but it's just not a boat that I would, uh, you know, recommend for those reasons. Because again, 90% of your time is going to be spent coastal cruising and island hopping. Now, the next boat they like is this one that's currently loading. What? Did I just do the same boat again? I'm an idiot. What am I doing here? Uh, what? Hold on. I'll get this up here, I promise. Here's the other one. Boom. This one. Now again, more of a canoe stern, right? Access into and out of the water. Difficult. Uh, nice boat. Fantastic boat for its day. Is this one I just looked at? Bristol 42? Oh, this one's something else. Um, no teak decks. Again. But... Center cockpit, I find it a lot of wasted space, a lot of tripping hazards up here, difficult to get fore and aft. Better than the last one for sure, but very, very small cockpit. And again, that's where you're going to spend all of your time is right in here. You just got no room in there. When you're living on a sailboat, being in the cabin all the time is difficult at best. Um, so not having a wide open cockpit to kind of escape it, pain in the butt. Getting in and out of this is a nightmare, FYI. Uh, let's go here. Come on. Can I get to the interior? So this is why people always like this. This is also really, really steep and becomes a pain in the butt. Reminds yourself of like a cave. These little lips they have on a lot of older boats. These are a giant tripping hazard, especially when you're in rough seas. I've broken my toes on these stupid things. I hate them. When they do this and it's for structural integrity i get it but i don't like it i prefer to go with ones without that less tripping hazards a lot of people look at this galley and go oh, i can tuck myself in and start cooking you can't really again depends on your sea state and what you're doing the pain in the butt um, and then your length of the waterline versus length overall on this boat's going to be a six or a seven foot discrepancy this one doesn't even really have a big master cabin which is surprising But that's just my two thoughts on those boats. Not that they're bad. They're just it's 150k for a 1982. That's I just can't, can't I can't I can't recommend that kind of a thing. You know, I got this big big carpet. My assumption it's got a bunch of water damage under there. Carpet that sits right here. People, like, who the throws carpet in a sailboat? What is this? 
LED lights? Or is that, you know, original engine, original transmission, you know, just the metal fatigue, just wearing out. It's all things to seriously, seriously consider. Uh, let me catch up on some questions. Area here. with hundreds and hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water I sooner than missed later. A bunch. All right. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Vintage. I appreciate it. Triple the speed with only a pocket full of blood. How hard is it to get a six pack? Uh, it's not hard at all, Joey. I'll pull it up for you. Actually. The thing with a six pack, um, it's the time. You got to have a certain amount of days on the water. You got to have 360 days of water uh, time. So here we are. One second. I have like this one no CM just trying to murder me. All right. Boom. If you're not familiar with what a six pack is, it allows you to take up to six guests and actually charge them. Um, so here's the requirements. Be 18 years or older. You need a minimum of 360 days boating experience now. A lot of, you can use any time you spent on a boat as a kid and an adult. It doesn't have to be any time recent. 90 of those days had to have occurred in the last three years. So it used to be the last year. Now it's the last three years. Much, much easier to get. Uh, be a U.S. citizen. Pass a physical exam. Adult CPR, basic first aid. Got to get your T WIC card. Um, and then pass a little license course. 500 bucks. Study, study, study. Take the test. Have the uh, water. That's how you get your six pack. Not that hard. Uh, engine access and through hole access on a boat is a nightmare. Yes, on that boat. Yeah, true. Uh, don't like catches blasphemy. <laughs> Mizzen sail. Uh, whoa, I missed a whole bunch of comments. Here. Any opinions on good full time liveaboard yachts around 250k? I want to be able to host. Yes. <coughs> yeah, Timothy. In that range, you have a ton of options. You do a lot of the newer 50 footers. 50 foot's a good size in my opinion you can still solo a 50 footer if you need to um which is nice of course depending on your sail plan but then they have 15 15 and a half foot beams nice dual helm cockpit huge wide open giant swim platforms you have a ton of them uh for 250k timothy you could do a catamaran and it's definitely something to consider uh as we move up in price here uh, we will uh Lost my yacht world. Shoot. One second. I lose my yacht world. Here. Have you ever sailed across an ocean? There it is. Thought I lost it. Uh, so yeah, so Tim, they just can keep track of your sea time. Can be done in a few months. Yes. Uh, Tim, there's a lot in the price range. Yes, there's a ton in that price range, Tim. Uh, she looks beautiful. Yes, very, very pretty boats. Oh, ABC game with a super chat. Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Just... ABC gang, thank you so much, my man. Appreciate it. Uh, I gotta catch up. Catches have a virtual... They have a versatile sale plan. Not really needed. Again, I'm not saying it's bad. There's just more efficient options. 140% uh, Genoa with a nice in-mast furler. It's gonna cover 90% of your sailing weather. Grab a code zero. Uh spinnaker or something and you pretty much got it all covered but without all that extra running cost and hassle and then the difficulty in using them and balancing them properly two mass to replace yes sloop cutters i like fractional rig sloops john uh that's my personal opinion just the ease of use i find enjoyable i can rock it on a fractional rig sloop i had a Geno 419 409 either 409 or a 419 uh, on a delivery beginning of this year and i was doing 14 and a half knots on a Geno 419 surfing 40 foot waves through the mona passage heading north to carolina um try work yeah those 80 boats very very difficult to work on eric andrea has a contessa no and I, eric does a fantastic job that guy's a true and blue sailor the dude's a stud um so yeah, and he doesn't, but he doesn't live on it full time. 
gut mode so just keep that in mind you know he goes out there does a lot of rough sailing goes home it's awesome he's phenomenal love that dude no chris they'll spend a lot of time working on it, even time yes true you buy one of those older boats you're just gonna do all your work on it why is the tram ran done well money pit boating the cost of it for one uh not only the initial purchase price cost but where are you gonna put it when you're out cruising around a lot of places don't have slips that wide that takes up a ton of room uh you're always gonna be paying a premium your livable space on that trimaran is not nearly as big as comparable catamarans or even mono hauls it's really just a mono hole uh and a very very narrow long one it's a 60 footer it was a fortune it you know he wants to go fast and stuff and i get it that's cool but uh for that kind of money if i was him i'd have probably uh i don't know gotten a private jet who knows so making beef wellington and baked alaska in a cat yes it is beef wellington i like it i like it uh i think that your minimum criteria for what makes the most sense better than spending money on a refit it makes yes i agree Stephen. appreciate it very very much uh abc gang again thank you for the super chat yeah maybe save a bit for a cat you could timothy but there's a lot of really really nice 50 footers out there in that price range uh, i'm working my way up to that price range of course gonna take forever uh, but 145 ds are very very nice love those boats uh, i'll pull one up right <laughs> um now there is uh I mean, these are nice. This is a phenomenal boat for this kind of money. Um, you know, you get the deck salon, you get a giant master cabin, two cabin owners layout, the raised coach roof, more light, more room, less of a step down into the cockpit. Um, you know, I mean, this is a great deal for 150K. They, this guy should have opened these up and gotten some light in there. That's the whole point of these deck salons. Uh, it's the amount of light. The stove looks like trash. Trash! Trash! Not for you! Just saying. Looks like trash. Um, a weekend of coaching. I like when people show stuff like this as if that's supposed to be like some selling point. Uh, microwave. Good old yammy. But yeah, I mean, I like the anything Dex a lot I'm a fan of. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Yeah, no problem, Tim. Microwave popcorn TV dinners. Dorado sucks. <laughs> Tom, I live in Dorado now. <laughs> oh my God, I love the Moody U showcase. The Moody 41 DS. Is that the one you're talking about? I mean, those are expensive, expensive boats. These? This is the one that you see here. That's a Moody 41 DS right there. Have you ever sailed across an ocean on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight? Without that even boat. A possibility. So that boat that you just saw there, um, Ba -dum boom the moody 41 ds guided tour yammering on oh this girl's a little too much camera time lady um -dum -bum -bum. yeah i mean i love these things man i mean i was on one of these in the annapolis boat show last year i would legitimately give my kidney to somebody for one of these these are so amazing. It's mind blowing. Um, I mean, they are just phenomenal boats. Gosh, I love them. Love them, love them, love them. Again, wide open concept. This one has a retractable sunroof on the BIM. It's, man, I mean, these things are just pooey. I have a video somewhere on them, uh, a page somewhere. 
somewhere, but somewhere. All right. Cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. We're catching up on comments. Uh, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Curly in mass versus um uh, i like in mass furlings sean you know you'll hear people say oh my gosh they're problematic it's usually again user error like i was on uh what was i on uh, oceanus 473 where it came out the uh in mass further came out at the bottom but that was user error it wasn't the boat's fault it wasn't the in mass fault uh, super super easy to fix fixed it underway no big deal with full sail up still fixed it and got us to tuck right back in there during those yeah pain in the butt uh in mass furling what they're phenomenal man but again personal preference different strokes for different folks different horses for different courses west has the yeah oh 419 that's what it was that's what i was doing 14 last time shredding uh thanks a million for being as thanks salty appreciate it man yeah people uh yeah i upset some folks k smith thanks my man glad to hear it Okay, gotta get caught up on these comments. Money pit boating, go look Neil five one trimarans. Yes, Neil has issues, but the idea is good. Yeah, I don't like trimarans, but again, just my personal preference. Because again, I always come from a standpoint of living aboard full time, ease of access, and trying to keep my running cost low. Um, and mass user haul in and boom, yeah, and mass are easy. Weight issues with the mass? Nope, not really. Uh, it's amazing how terrible these so-called. They're horrible. Brokers are the worst. They do a terrible job. Horrible job. Uh, it's like the real estate brokers of boats. Trash. Again. Trash! Trash! Not for you! Trash! Trash! Not for you! That's what I think about brokers. <laughs> when I'm done with this, it roast another YouTube sailing channel. Uh, who was it? uh it was uh this moron hold on i'll show you <laughs> have you ever sailed across an ocean on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight because these idiots uh were crying on a facebook post about me uh somebody posted a comment on a youtube sailing channels on facebook uh and they're all like little fanboys of this imaginary sailing world that these YouTubers sell you. Uh, and this hag was crying in the comments because I made fun of her boyfriend last year for crying during an Atlantic crossing. Uh, so there is that. Keep that in mind. Boom. There we go. All right. We're shaking. Max. Yes. Oh, what's up, man? Uh, let me catch up here. You know, I like the Moody's more than the Garcia's, John. Pers uh, but the Garcia, that's the boat I was thinking of earlier. Um, now, Garcia is the aluminum one. Uh, and these are fantastic. Bam. Um, nowhere you can't go. Um, this Exploration 45, very, very similar to a Moody 45 or Moody 41 DS. Uh, I mean, these boats... I don't like uh, how broken up the interior is on them. But again, I also, what's that other Dexalon? Sirius Dexalons? I don't like those either. A lot of people love them. They're just too broken up for me. Uh, again, personal preference, not the end of the world. Uh, um, yeah, spendy, spendy. Woody Foreman is rich. Yes, true. I can't afford that boat. Uh, I wish I, I'm telling you, if someone needs a kidney, get me a Moody 41 DS. You can have one of mine. Um, two cabin 41 DS popped up. Uh, Hunter? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I'll give you my kitty right now. You need like a toe? I'm, I can, I'll give you a couple toes, you know? You have like three or four of them. Uh, yeah. Bendy. Oh, Moody 41 DS. Yes, yeah, son of a hoot. Uh, what do you think of the four? I like the fours. Annapolis Boat Show last year, K Smith. Uh, I think it was at a 4440. Phenomenal boat. Absolutely huge for a 44 footer. I mean, gorgeous, stunning, phenomenal, amazing. I also watched a guy fall right off the swim platform, right into the water. Uh, it was awesome. Best day of my life watching that dude fall. Um, it's always great at boat shows when people fall in the water. 
you know, I'm the only person clapping, but, you know, it's like tickets to a free movie. You just get to watch the show. It's amazing. And they just eat it. Yep, like the food, for sure. Yeah, the Garcias are phenomenal. You know, I give those out often. I like your uh, picture, Salty Seeker. Sophie looks like Piper. I don't know who that is. Chris is one of the few sailing channels that haven't gone to hell. Watch them all. Just clickbait. Chris and Captain Rick Moore from S. Yes. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not well liked in the sailing community because I'm always trashing people. There's no crying in sailing. That's what I thought, man. Oh, what are you crying? Are you crying? Yeah, I don't like the layout of the Garcia, but they are nice. He begs for money as his viewers are to fund them. Yeah, I don't like her. Trip on two wheels. What's up, my man? <coughs> Excuse me. Gosh, I just copped right in the mark. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. So boat tour, meet polar seal. Um, you've already got one of those down there. Ba -dum -bum -bum. And these guys are always drama. Here goes Crybaby right here. Crybaby Johnny over there. This guy didn't know how to microwave mashed potatoes or heat them up. They're frozen. Like my dude, get a life. Potato for brains. You know, somebody like tries to harass me, like I'll roast you. Isn't that the same thumbnail? Didn't they see the thumbnail? <laughs> They're just reusing content. Nice one, you in potato untold harsh realities of sailing and then typical boat life just same thumbnail absolute lazy potato uh and then there's another boat tour here somewhere are they crying again these guys are like someone should send them some tissue for christmas they're probably gonna go through it You know how much time it took to set up this thumbnail? <laughs> Let me lay out all the food. God, this chick's just crying all the time, man. These are like the channels you like when you don't know anything that you're doing. Then once you know what you're doing, you're like... <laughs> oh yeah, here it is. Here's the tour of the boat right here. And then... Their most re tour of the boat. <laughs> you loser. Um, there's crying and sailing just when you're fit. Yes. I've seen some crying, but it's usually when the bill comes. Uh, a Garcia, get a Kraken. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I only need one kidney. I'd give up a liver. True. Those are a nice boat. Uh, Steven Smith, might as well get a Shannon then. Two Cabin Moody, yes. Ba -da -ba -ba. How do you see the used boat next six months to a year? So Expo Frog, in the next six months, these prices are going to drop. A lot of people will get rid of their vessels in winter, especially people in the Northeast United States, Northwest United States. They will drop them to a lower price just before winter storage hits because they don't want to pay for another six months of storage. So in the next couple of months, what month is it? Basically October. Uh, so they should start dropping this month. Now, again, that's going to be on select vessels locations, not all of them. Um, and then really the best deals are usually X charters. Uh, now you have to do your due diligence buying them, but I had a member by a uh, Genoa 50 footer that had hurricane damage. We sailed it from St. Martin to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, to USVIs, USVIs back to Puerto Rico. Uh, and then he noticed some impact damage under up above the ceiling in the uh, port side head uh called up moorings and they were moorings was like we'll take care of it take it wherever you want to send us the estimate we'll schedule the repair and get it done for you so i'm a big big fan of moorings they're fan fantastic they do a great job they uh there's a lady named darcy that works there avoid her at all costs she's horrible uh if you call the phone and you get transferred to the fort lauderdale office she'll answer she'll instantly ask for your first and last name the reason she does that is so she can be on your deal and be listed as the broker. 
Uh, so if you call up and she answers, just give her a fake name so you don't have to deal with her. I had to track her down at the Annapolis show two years ago uh, for another client because she just like disappeared and didn't return phone calls. Uh, avoid her at all costs. 27K for 10336, 1995. Not a bad deal. Price drop. See? Price drops coming. A Malkin there. That's funny. Uh, pimp your girl out. Maybe you can get a movie. True. True. I mean, that's true, my man. I'd give your. <laughs> this could be a good, that'd be a nice boat. I'd be thrilled with that boat. You're not trashing. That's what I thought, Gump. That's what I thought. Look at this awesome Moody. Oh, no. Lost my chat. Trying to catch up on my chat. Uh, yeah, I don't know who Piper Blush is. Trap into them? Yes. Hello. But one of the few. Uh, yeah. Girl in bikini cry. I remember I told you. Bikini cry face drama. Uh, speaking of that, that uh, other dude, uh, Sailing Doodles or whatever, um, something's up with him because his last video. All of his crew's gone. He's like all sad face. And I guess he has another channel, like an RVing channel. And he's like way behind on comment content. Um, so he's like showing videos of him and his ex-girlfriend who on the sailing channel broke up like months ago. Yeah, I was on this boat. I was on this exact boat. Yeah, I like this boat a lot. Let's go to the interior, please. Oh, Chris Sawyer, what's up, my man? Oh, with a super chat. Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Super chats are always appreciated. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, yeah, I love these Moody 41s. The Garcias are nice. The Sirius DSs are nice. Uh, yeah, these boats are great. Anyway, um, we're shaking, we're baking, we're working our way up. The pricing here in used sailboats. Let me catch up on comments. Carbon has a tendency to shatter on impact. Yes, it does. I'm switching from monohull to a catamaran. Uh, I think it's a good choice, BB. If you have the money for a catamaran, you can get the right one. Uh, and again, it depends on what type of sailing you're going to be doing. Um, now, there's an affordable catamaran um, that I absolutely love. Oops, wrong page. Hold on. See if we can find one here. Yeah. Now, the Gemini, this one, the Gemini Legacy, this is fantastic. Uh, if I was going to buy a boat for Caribbean sailing, coastal cruising, island hopping, this would be the one. I would probably take this over an equally priced model hole, even though these are expensive, because I've been on them and the layout is just fantastic. So when it comes to model hole or this, if it's a couple or something, I think you'd be better off with this. But again, it, it, that's only if you're going to be coastal cruising, island hopping, living in the Caribbean, things like that. This is not an ocean going one. Um, so that'd be like an affordable cat. But BB, it would depend on what your budget is, what kind of sailing you're going to do, if you can afford it, things like that. Uh, all matter. Okay, sorry. Excuse me. Beyond, sorry. Um, yeah. I mean, I... As far as liveaboard goes, catamarans can be great. Sailing performance, not phenomenal. Uh, so it depends heavily on what you're doing. Keep that in mind. Uh, is there a best worst time of year to buy a liveaboard boat in the Caribbean or East? So John, Northeast of the United States of America next month is a great time to buy usually. Like I was just saying, a lot of people are going to put them in storage. They don't want to pay for storage again. Um, <coughs> and um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you can get a good deal. Now, as far as buying in the Caribbean, generally right around January, February, a bunch of the ex-charters will come out. You can get great deals on those boats. Um, you know, things to, uh, consider. Sorry. Thank you so much for the super chat, my man. I missed do your it! question first time, John. I apologize. Just do I'm it! trying to catch up on comments really, really quick. But thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, but yeah, John. So, uh. I noticed that Beardo Beardo, the travel sailing videos, not bikini. Yeah, that's views. Thank you, Chris. I don't know who that is. Oh, that's why I don't know who that is. Um, Doodles is a drunk. So, <laughs> John, thanks again for the super chat. Uh, I'm trying to catch up on comments here. Okay, 
Doodle spot a Genoa for the med, trying to sell it before Vat kicks in. Yeah. Uh, the Gemini is nice, but yeah, they sail like trash. That's what I mean. If you're, it depends heavily on what you're doing. You know, uh, I was on one in Nassau. Like, I was in Nassau twice. I don't remember when. February, I think the beginning of February and then the end of February is in Nassau. Um, anywho, so uh, moving, we're shaking, we're baking, we're catching up. Coastal cruising, yeah, catamaran, fantastic, my man. You're gonna live aboard full time to coastal cruising for sure. John, again, thank you so so much. Chris, thank you so so much for the super chat as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got you. I'm sure that I did. Thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, ba -dum -ba -ba. Yeah, they do. Diet Rockstar. Yeah, I got to run downstairs and grab one, actually. If you guys don't mind giving me a second, I'm going to run downstairs and grab some drink. Doodles, a bit. yeah, he does. He pays for him. Yep. Yeah, no. But and see, at least he's honest about it. Um, You know what I mean? He's honest about it. He, uh, that's just, you know, it's what's good. But I think, I think YouTube's demonetizing him a bunch. I'm going to run downstairs and grab a Rockstar. I'll be right back. Have you ever sailed across an ocean on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight? without even the possibility of sighting land for days to come. To stand at the helm of your destiny. I want that one more time. I want another meal in Paris. I want another bottle of wine, and then another. Boom, I'm back. I want to stand on Wait here. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> that screensaver just gets... Yeah. Right before we get into this, don't forget, head on over to my Patreon. It's only $10 a month, and you do get access to my private members area with hundreds and hundreds of other members, all looking to get on the water sooner than later. No, BV, I won't. Too cold up there for me. Um, but I've been a bunch. Like last year, I met like 40 or 50 members up there. Um, and then I always get recognized at the boat show by my voice. <laughs> so I'll be talking to like a client on a boat and people start staring at me. And I'm like, uh, this is awkward. <laughs> and people will be like, are you? I'm like, yes, that's me. Um, all right, back at it here. But so no, I won't be there this year. Um, they're fantastic to go to. I recommend everybody go to a sailboat show once in their life if they get the opportunity. Uh, it's fantastic. True. True, true, true. Yeah, I'll show you guys. Uh, let me show you guys something. Let me find it. I upset some of the online sailing community. <laughs> Boom. So there's this group, YouTube sailing channels on uh, Facebook. And here's somewhere. Somebody made a crying video about little old me. Where is it at? Somebody ripped into these guys. Who is this? This is sailing Merriweather or something. This guy got all upset. Oh, Where's the post about me? Where's it at? 
Ba -ba -ba. Where is it? Hello? Can they remove that? Nope. Should be here somewhere. Oh, come on. They paused comments on it because, uh, just get so many comments. But I think somebody must have, uh, one of the admins removed it. Like 200 and something comments. And this guy's wondering what the world Jerry Doodle is up to. Oh, see, we're in the run for the most inspirational sailing channel in the Cruisers Award. Where is it? So apparently, they took it down. I was all famous too. Well, it should be here somewhere. Come on. Where's it at? Come on. Oh, here it is. When the heck happened to Chasing Latitudes? Now just full of negative rants of other YouTube channels. Plus, the guy comes across as a misogynist, calling women chicks. And then. <laughs> Some people commented, and, they, and some people are, they're like, I like his honesty. <laughs> uh, but that moron Sophie Darcy commented, and then I'm just like, You're welcome, <laughs> losers. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm doing my free time. I cracked myself up. Yeah, I had to buy pants and socks last time, and a hoodie. Yeah, they're bad at. Uh, they're... What's your favorite currently in the for a monohull, John? I mean, again, it depends on what kind of sailing you're gonna be doing. Caribbean, island hopping, coastal cruising. You want to cross the Atlantic? <clears throat> what are you thinking? I can bump up in price here, and we can go over some if you want, John. Uh, I'll pull up some boats in the 100k range if you want. We'll pop up in price. Unless anybody here wants to look at this. So you cause a cry? Yes. I cry. I know that's super meta, dude. <laughs> uh, good show. Are you seeing? Yes, M. How prices will drop uh, next month for their winter season, and then in February a bunch of stuff will hit the market. Uh, X charters will be the best deal in February. Uh, early spring is bad to buy from private owners because they're just putting them up just in time for the sailing season. So a lot of people ask too much money. So we're just gonna pop up here in prices. Isn't YouTube dingling sale Chinese video where they show to? Yes, yes, true, yes. Uh, Facebook Anonymous, yeah, they always. Don't forget the lifting keel centerboard too. All right, let's go. Uh, we'll just do this. Yeah, Mike, hunters usually have great deals, I'm telling you. Um, you know, you can get a lot of bang for the buck here. Now, the 100k range, I would never buy these old boats. This Chinese junk boat's been for sale for like years now. Uh, I would never buy a Catalina for 100k either. Too old for that kind of money. My humble opinion. Value. Don't forget. Value. Boom. Uh, same thing, I wouldn't buy an island packet, especially not a 35. It's a 29 footer. Uh, oh, Pacific Sea Craft, 91. Wouldn't buy that either. Too big of a discrepancy. Length water over line versus length overall. The Hunter 410s are nice. This is a pretty good price for one. That's a big, big boat for 91K. But again, depends on what kind of sailing you're doing. I don't like this boat myself because it only has a single cockpit. I prefer dual cockpits for the wide open cockpit because that's where you're going to spend 90% of your time. Uh, this looks like down here. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, a custom wrap on the wheel. How fancy. That's an original mattress. Whoa that cruising but a car rossing capable i've watched most of your videos i think yeah yeah it's all about running costs uh these 37s are nice this is a good price for one currently but it's a bit small in my opinion it's big for a 37 footer but if it's going to be a full-time thing it's a bit small the 411's too old in my opinion for that kind of money catalina fantastic boat it's a 380 uh this isn't that bad for one and again catalinas have a big big community 
Um, so it's easy to do stuff. I wouldn't buy one, but again, depends on what you're doing. 136, a lot of bang for the buck. A little bit much for that one. 92.5 is too much for a 2006 36. Carton 3500s notoriously have the deck rot on the top. Um, these little trailer sailor type catamarans, specific type of sailing, not live aboard. Saber's too old. Catalina's too old. 10460 for 93. Now, this is a big one. But again, I personally don't like it because it's a single helm. That's a big, big boat for that money. So if you're just going for big boat, I would launch this arch so fast. It just gets in your way. Um, but if you're talking about space, bang for the buck. Uh, this is probably a good one. Never seen the listing before. So when I get through with all these exterior photos. Oh, someone peed in your bed, dude. Come on. What are you? Trash! Trash! Not... Yep, that's what you are. Why wouldn't you change the sheet, dude, you scumbag? I mean, seriously. This, I mean, this... I wonder if a smoker lived in here. It looks kind of yellow and dingy. This looks like dingy. It's like back alley, like, disease dingy. So maybe not this one. Um, Just based off of their stuff. Uh, how shallow shoals you be cruising uh, are lifting center boards more problems they're worth um i personally wouldn't go for like a lifting center board again that would be a specific type of sailing if you're going to be somewhere shallow the whole life of the boat sure uh you do get some added performance because you can go pretty deep with the lifting center boards so you can get into shallow places but have the deeper draft when you need it but again more working parts more things that can fail uh things to consider Let's take up space inside the interior. Um, so just things to consider there. Almost got a hunter a few months back. Just had to wait till March. Yes. I like the ability. Yes. And that's a, that's a plus for the uh, lifting queue. How about searching for cats in the... Yeah, I will. It's hard to dispute the truth. Yeah. Thanks, Gordon. Appreciate it, man. Uh, it depends on what the economy is doing, Richard. If the economy keeps this artificial inflation in the stock market and uh, things like that, you, know, you might not see much of a drop. Now, again, remember, the Cyclades 43, 43.3, um, this is the one that uh, the Vagabond got like 10 years ago. They bought it for 100K. They're still going for 100K. So it depends on what boat you buy or what boat you're looking at and when you buy and what kind of a deal you can get because you can get yourself into a boat at a great price that's going to hold that value uh it's just very very specific now these older boats are not going to hold that kind of value um things to consider the 365 grand large this is a good price for one again not a boat i'd go for a single helm but um when you get up in the 100k range i would always recommend a dual helm the oceanus 400s i don't like single helm 40.5s yeah so like a lot of single helms, if I'm going to spend a hundred grand on a boat, I really want to get myself into a dual helm or a larger one like that pea stained hunter. But because it's got pea stains, it might not be that epic of a deal. Um, are you doing consulting as well? In... Yes, Dominic, I do. Yes. <laughs> um, I helped a guy just buy a boat in Taiwan. Uh, Oceana's 41. Um, actually yes uh on my website chasinglatitudes.com have you ever sailed across an ocean on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight without a now chasinglatitudes.com consulting right here left hand side click on a little button scroll on down bingo so I got my spreadsheet, my ebooks there, 24 seven consulting, consulting package. You do one kind of consult, they're on sale right now. They're half price. That's out of, uh, boom. Yes, it's there. 350, 400 for the cat. Yeah, you can get a good one for 400. 350, 400, it's a good price range. But were anyone thinking about a 45 foot sailboat it would be huge. Think again, I was on a Hans 445 for Kevin. Yeah, so a lot of people, oh brothers, they look specifically at this, this number, 40. And they think it's a 40-foot boat. Not all 40-footers are the same. Not all 45-footers are the same. The uh, the Oceanus 41 and 41.1 is as big as a lot of 45 and 50-footers as far as your livable space goes. 
Hans notoriously kind of builds their boats like an Apple iPhone. They're very, very rectangular. They don't have a lot of headroom in them. Um, so it really is very, very specific on the boat. But a larger boat does get small fairly quick, depending on how many people you have on board. Uh, so it's things to consider, like a 50-footer for a couple and a couple of kids. That's borderline too small. Again, for full-time cruising, live aboard. Uh, so we're here in the 100k range. Production. Would you recommend in the 80k range from Big Island to South Pacific and back? Production, would you recommend in the 80k range? I mean, it depends. Uh, is your goal just making the sail? Because like an Oceanus 40, if you can pick up an Oceanus 40 for that, that'll do the job. No problem. Um, and you got the dual helm, walk through transom, two cabin owner's version. They usually go for about a hundred though. But if you can get a good deal on an Oceanus 40, Gordon, that's a good one. Um, for like, you know, if my budget was 80K and I wanted to do full-time sailing, I might work an extra year or two and save up another 20 and then grab something for a hundred K. Um, because the difference in 80, whoa, no. there um so yeah uh things to consider i think got all messed up uh clear uh, all right we're moving we're shaking we're baking because see like i'm in like the 80 90 95 100 range right now there's not a lot a lot of people say these catalinas i just don't think it's worth buying a boat for 96 that's 21 years old <laughs> i'd try to go as new as i could and some like Catalina's hold their value really, really well. It's kind of like the uh, VW thing. There's just a giant, uh, you know, thing about it. One second, I gotta look this up. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Have you ever sailed across an ocean? on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight, without even the possibility of sighting land for days to come. To stand at the helm of your destiny. I want that one more time. All right, sorry about that. Thanks, Tim, appreciate it. Uh crank in here oh comments don't forget to hit that like button likes are free there's over 100 people watching only 81 likes please hit the like button it's free jk you go no i'm not i don't like going to the mainland jk um i don't have clothes for that type of weather first of all it's cold up there um but i mean i live on an island in the caribbean going to the mainland dealing with the city kind of a drag uh and i've been to a bunch of boat shows like i'll go to help people you know but um the dollar is crashing. World War is entire pile. would wait too long. <laughs> What's the market like in Taiwan? Eesh. I'm not sure right now. It was a little while ago when I did that. Uh, I bought my Endeavor 43 on eBay. Sweet, man. The deal. Yes, the deals are out there. And if you have, yeah, when you find the boat you want, it's best to have it narrowed down at first. Uh, and then when one pops up that you want, you can jump on it. But if you have it narrowed down ahead of time, you know exactly what is a good price to pay and what's not. Honest have two inches below the deck, they would have, yeah, if they did, yeah. And I wish that they uh, did a more on like the deck salon type thing, little brothers. Thanks, Tim, appreciate it. Hamster, yes. Yeah, and that ML50 uh, is a good point. That's a really, really difficult one for him to solo. He has a tough time soloing this thing. Oh, it's not that one. He doesn't have that. What 50 does he have? Is it, no, it's not a 50. It's only like 49. What is it? It's not a 50. Is it a 49? Try to pull it up. I don't remember what it is. Ba -dum -ba -ba. What are we doing here? Not this one. Not 
that. Is it a mango? 52? Maybe? What was it? I don't know what it is. A mouse soup. Yeah. Okay. So it's... Is it the 46 or the 52, Timothy? 53? So it's this 52 then, probably, right? That's his boat, isn't it? Is that his boat? Yeah. This one, right? Or no? But same thing with... It's this 53, right, Scott? Yeah, it's this one, right? This one, right? Yeah. So here's the... This is why I don't like them. Um, so it's got a length of waterline 41 feet. Length overall of 53 feet. So you're paying a lot for this big, big overhang here at the stern. Um, and with this type of a sail plan, that's what makes it so hard for him to solo. Not the boat I would go for. Again, and he'll even admit it. Um, it's really, really difficult for him to solo. Him to sail. It's very, very hard with the kid and the wife. Um, uh, global, what? Is your boat or sooner than you think? Ba -dum -bum -bum. Yeah. Uh, what's your thoughts on buying a boat on a lake? It depends on... First of all, they're freshwater boats, so the second you take them to salt water, you're going to have to change a bunch of stuff on them for the salt water. Um, that's one thing to consider. The prices on the Great Lakes boat, a lot of people charge more money for a freshwater boat, thinking it's a bonus. I don't think it's a bonus. I actually think it's the opposite. Um, and then your transportation cost is going to probably be fairly expensive, depending on, again, where you're moving it from A to B. So you'd have to take all those things into consideration first uh, before you did that. Excuse me. One second. Cruise it. Boom. All right. Rolling. Shaken bacon. That's too much money for a 1993. These valiants I'm not a fan of because of the discrepancy length waterline versus length overall. Please keep that in mind. Yeah, it is. Well, that's the thing. And that big boat with that big, big sail plan is just not very efficient. Not only is it not efficient in the wind, uh, it's not efficient for running costs. So they become very, very expensive. Great Lakes to the coast via the loop. You can do that as well. Timber Lady K is an expert on bringing a pretty... <laughs> 53. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dark Sir... Siva, Siva. I can't pronounce that. I'm also an idiot. Um, I know how to do one thing good, and that's just save them life itself i'm terrible at <clears throat> eeks look at that overhang Sixty four forty seven catch it's like a 27 foot boat pretty though i mean these were they had pretty pretty designs back then you know but a boat like this would is that like a ving vaz ming a ming vaz that's what Told you I'm an idiot. Um, the step down's danger. Anyway, I don't know why I'm looking at this. I get sidetracked sometimes by the classics. Market's not looking good. These four ones are always right around 100k. Don't like them again. Single helm. Five four one. I mean, in this case, if that's what I was going to do, I might, I might do the Catalina over the Beneteau in that particular case. The 39 I'm a big, big fan of for 100K because you get the dual helm, swim platform, walk through transom, easy access to and from the boat, fairly okay size cockpit. These uh, Biminis you normally have to raise. This one you'd have to replace. It's all saggy and droopy. You could use some Viagra to stand up. Uh, but these are nice little boats, you know, you can sometimes get these for like 89 K. So keep in mind, this one's got a bunch of wear and tear. Yeah. But a couple can get away with a 39 I.
the Pacific Sea Craft 39. This is not a 39 footer. Again, this is like a 26 footer as far as livable space. They sell them as livable blue waters. You have no room in here. Very, very hobby horsey underway. Takes a lot of wind to get going. Um, these are just a pain in the rump. Three nine threes are okay. It's pretty small for a thirty nine footer. Like living in a shoebox. True. Almost sank it. What happened? What would I miss? Concordia, y'all. How about y'all? No. Inkly Bermuda. That's a lot of money for one hundred thirty eight. What in the world's going on in Florida? Uh, North Carolina must be something in the water. Their prices. Eddie K almost sank. Yeah, that guy's an idiot. Oh, that guy's... In one of his videos, he's like, I'm looking for someone to write scripts for me. Or maybe use AI to write my scripts. What? It's because you don't know what you're talking about. That's why you need someone to write your scripts. You don't know what you're talking about. So you have to look at... Most of his stuff is like word for word from Wikipedia. That guy has almost no experience. Idiot. Um, three, six ones are way too small. There was a channel that had one. These things are tiny. What was the name of that channel? See the little things had one. Dude, I'm excited. You are doing our live market video. Got a great new show. Awesome. Glad to have you, my man. Get something like 38, 40 in a year or so. Nice. Hopefully prices will drop, man. Get a good deal here. Um, yeah, dude. That's because when you take a boat from freshwater to saltwater, you got to change a bunch of stuff. And he was just like, woohoo, I got a freshwater boat. Gold Star Center Cockpit, 1977 for 100K. Get real with a 40K price drop. Are you on heroin, sir? Trash, trash. Absolute. This boat's been for sale for a long time. See, you just got no room in these damn things. Darn things. Excuse my language. Ah, pretty wood. I was on Ernest Hemingway boat in uh, Isla Marada, Florida, in the Florida Keys. Uh, that had some cool woodwork. I appreciate nice woodwork, but this is a big boat. 46 footer, single helm, but big boat. A lot of boat for the money. 100K. But I have a member who's got the 41 DS. I think it's the 41, 141 DS. He likes it. Him and his wife are living their best life. 343 for 100K. Smoking crack in Marathon, Florida. How about Rico? <laughs> it happens, Dark. Don't worry. <clears throat> I mean, if you look at his stuff, he just copies most of my stuff. Uh, Yoshi, now this is a good deal. Price-wise, 100k for a 50-footer. I'm not saying like this specific one, because this might be a trash can. But, big boat. Now, if you remember, Expedition Evans bought this exact same boat for 100k that was salvaged in a hurricane and spend a year refitting the boat. <laughs> you could have just bought this one that's not salvaged. Uh, rip, roar, and rock. I Chino does a better job. Square table here would be better. Like, those are little things you should always do on a boat. Square this table off. Make it easier to walk around the darn thing. You can do a lot of stuff to boats to increase their space by just adjusting some things. Little woodworking skills, and you're good to go. That's a stock photo. I hate brokers that do stock photos. Your absolute trash can. Uh, does he? Yeah, I, I don't actually watch his videos. I just, uh, I've seen some. Let me pull up some. Oops, sorry. Excuse my language. Um, So if you just go back, um, like I've done all these videos, $200,000 boats, 35 footers, top five, you know, I've done all this, uh, and he just copied me. Boom, boom, boom. Every day. Uh, this guy just copied me. And then people always 
when I make fun of him, people are like, oh, he's got more subscribers than you. He's got 69,000 subscribers. Let me show you something. Have you ever sailed across an ocean? One second here. On a sailboat surrounded by sea. Ow, he's got 508,000 views in the last 30 days. Remember that number, 508,000 views in the last 30 days. Ocean? I have 1.1 million. Ow, oh, thanks for playing, Lady K. Thanks for playing. I smoked your ass, punk. <laughs> Sorry about my language. I apologize. Uh, freshwater sailboat first thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find me a boat. What are you looking for, Sean? What kind of boat? Delos was... I like Delos. I mean, I like him. His wife's absolutely adorable. They seem to have a great family. It's just more of a business. I would look at that more like a travel vlog and i really think that like and this is just my humble opinion uh yes um i think a lot of these channels that have been doing this for a while like that and i'll show you what i mean uh again i like delos have you ever sailed across an ocean um, i don't watch them because i don't watch sailing channels on a but, sailboat surrounded by sea um i think a lot of these channels like this one how long it's 13 years uh, you know, and it started out just like the boys cruise, you know, cooking, doing sailing stuff. Awesome. As, as time happens, you grow up, you get married, have a kid, things like that. I think that these guys would probably do better. Um, if they, uh, have you ever made it more of like a travel ocean? vlog where the, uh, you know, sailing was a smaller part of it. 1.21 million. And they have 835,000 subscribers. I have 35,000 subscribers and I have the same amount of views. Things to consider. So I would say that what they're doing as far as YouTube is concerned, uh, no longer working. So they're great storytellers. They do a good job at cinematography. They're a very, very likable couple. I think that they would probably explode if they made it more of a travel vlog. Instead of uh, the sailing, just kind of not really uh, doing it for me anymore. Uh, after they had a kid, yeah. Most exciting thing I've seen them do in a while is, yeah, probably, yeah. Again, I like them. I'm not picking on them. Uh, yeah, I bet. I mean, sailing channels as a whole. Um, let's pull up some others here. Sailing channels as a whole is getting hard. Um, just because, you know, I mean, the Vagabond 1.9 million, you know, and they have, I think a million subscribers or something. I mean, I'm approaching them with 35,000 subscribers. I should never, ever come close to these channels, but I, a lot of times I beat them. Uh, and then that just goes to show you that, uh, the days of like, sailing channel type thing um it's just kind of like it's had its heyday so like expedition evan or uh atticus has 300 250,000 subscribers i've more than doubled their views with 35,000 subscribers so people can talk all that they want about me the reality is i do this for a living i know what i'm talking about my channel is not uh to do that it's to actually get people on the water I do a lot of deliveries, but you'll never see me staring at the camera. Uh, after a hose, you left us. Ah, bummer. Lady K will trash a particular boat. Then, yes. Yeah. Did you see that? He did that with the uh, Benitos. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Let's catch up on comments here. One second. David, I see you. Hold on. Thoughts on, uh, I don't know who that is. Is that a person? I don't know who that is. I don't really watch sailing channels already. I'd be happy to take a look and tell you what I think, though. Do you want me to? Uh, so when I first heard Chasing Latitudes say somebody was copying him, I knew who he was talking about, and I just discovered Chasing Latitudes and Lady K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mentioned it in some videos without, like, mentioning his name, and then he just kept doing it. And I was like, dude, you trash can. Um, anyway. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Uh, 
Gilligan's Island. Yeah, buddy. I love that show. I like Chris even more when he talks crap. <laughs> Thanks, my man. Appreciate it. Uh, what do you think about Spirit Animal? I don't think I've seen it. I'll pull it up. Again, I don't really like actually watch sailing channels. So, Have you ever uh, sailed across an ocean? Spirit Animal. On a sailboat. Yeah, I've never seen this in my life. land in sight. So, because uh, again, I don't watch sailing channels. Uh, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, because I, I can't know. Uh, yeah, Stella's family living the dream. Yeah, I bet she is. Yeah, she's probably over it. It's probably tough too having a kid on a boat. I mean, it's hard enough just being a normal, you know, an adult, um, on a boat, let alone a kid. Ugh, that's gonna be hard. Spirit animal is funny. Stella's is heading towards land. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd say good. That's what I mean. They, they should like transition, in my opinion. Um, to like a travel vlog, Have land travel vlog or ocean. something, just like uh, these guys did. And these guys are actually doing pretty good. Do it! Oh, wrong button. Uh, so these guys, I'm sure you all know them. Matt's super super cool guy. Um, now everybody knows, you know, how they got their views. Um, I like him. I talk to him a lot. He's a super super cool guy. But they just quit. They just said, nope, not today, kids. Um, and then they, you know bought an abandoned property boom their views skyrocketed and then now their views are becoming higher with this property stuff than it was the sailing stuff so that's what i mean i think that like sailing channel vlogs you can only tell everybody you sold your stuff so many times before people are like what <laughs> i don't care it's all the same story um they're both just getting yeah a lot of issues with that boat the older the boat the more issues you're gonna have more often in sailing channels most everything has been done before true Everybody's trying to tell the same story and they're all trying to tell it the same way. What do you think about center cockpits? Uh, Kyle, I would say it depends on where you live and where you plan to sail. Now, center cockpits, generally speaking, it's so that you have a large master cabin inside the vessel. So in the tropics, it makes no sense because you're gonna spend very, very little time in the cabin of your vessel. So if you plan on sailing somewhere warm more often than not, I would say avoid a center cockpit. Now, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, or the Northeast Coast, New York, Boston, Maine, things like that. Center cockpit can be great because it's often gray, cloudy, rainy, and cold. And so you can spend a lot of time down there in your master cabin uh, while living on the sailboat. But in the tropics, warm weather, I'd say no. Uh, sailing channels are cool to see sometimes when they are beautiful. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, they say <laughs> new sky. Oh, talk. Yes, we're on it, Kyle. We're on it. Uh, Spirit is going to leave. For hub blogs? Yeah, I don't know who these are. Uh, fuck, what's up, my man? Long time to see. Yeah, I think it's nice. Um, but they're doing that. Fuck, what's up, man? Long time to see. Young couple starts saying they have a baby. Yes, true. Hope to never be a normal adult. Fair enough. Okay, let's go. All right, $100,000 range. Again, remember, Catalina as a whole has a very, very big community. Um, so repairs, parts, things like that. You always got to think about that stuff. How easy is it to get replacement parts for the kind of vessel you want to get? Um... A lot of these older boats, it's really, really hard to get them. Especially if you're somewhere in the Caribbean, like being the USVIs, you're not going to be able to get a replacement part for a 1987 Gulf Star. It's not going to happen. Take you weeks, if not months. This is the uh, Captain Ron. That's not the particular one, but Formosa. I think the Captain Ron was a 52 Formosa. The Tartan's too old to spend 100K on, in my humble opinion. JK, what's up, my man? White Dog, good to see you. Robert, what's up? Uh, how viable is living in a sailboat for average construction work? You can do it, Robert. It's the it's the initial, and it depends on where you're at, Robert. So like in the Florida Keys, Florida Keys is notoriously very, very expensive to rent. So a sailboat down there, if you got a construction job down there, fantastic way to go. You moor it out right off of uh, Mallory Square, fairly cheap, um, and then just dingy back and forth to work every day, fantastic. Now, if you live somewhere else where the cost of living on a boat is equal to an apartment, 
such as a lot of places in Boston, Maine, um, New York, it can be the case. Um, sometimes not so viable. So it really depends on your location. So I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about center cockpits. So this one has a sugar scoop on it with a walkthrough transom. You don't actually have any cockpit space. So you can get out of the vessel fairly easy. This arch is going to get in the way. But you can get in and out of the vessel fairly easy for a center cockpit, which is usually hard to find. But you have no room here. So what that means, this is a 40-footer. So let's say you're on a 1,300-mile trip from USVIs to uh, South Carolina. You're going to have, let's say you have three or four crew on board. You can only really fit a couple up here. So people are going to be stuck down in the cabins. A lot of times that'll make people sick. It's very, very uncomfortable down there. It's also going to be very, very warm, especially when you're underway. Um, so they just don't make good overall long cruising boats. Again, you're incredibly exposed to the elements up here, even with this little rinky dink bimini. Um, But a lot of people see them and they want to go for this master cabin. Which, uh, they've done a bad job at showing it here. What the? With that upholstery. Okay, so they're not going to show the master cabin. All right, cool. Uh, check out that 44. Yeah, I just did. Um, so yeah. But that's what I'm talking about, Kyle. Mike, believe it or not, found me. Nice. Good question on the part situation. Uh, easy and available cup mode, the Genoa, Beneteau, Genoa and Beneteau are the top two easiest. Outside of that, Defour, Bafaria, Hans, Catalina, uh, those are all relatively easy, but the easiest ones are going to be Genoa and Beneteau because they're the largest. So Kyle, that might work <coughs> for you because it's cold there. I think I would try to find myself, Kyle, if I was leaning towards that route. What I would do is uh, like a dual helm vessel for this price. And then I would just do an enclosed Bimini. So you'll have a large outdoor area that's enclosed for the inclement weather. Put a nice cabin down below, more user friendly. You can entertain more guests out there. Put up some lights, enclosed, like a sunroom on it, basically, and then invite people over. Could work for you. Just things to think about. Um, again, I don't like these little lip. This is just little pet peeve stuff. These little lips. I tend to break my toes on these all the time. Uh, so some tripping hazards there. Just as far as a boat goes, I would probably launch this table completely if I got this boat. Uh, and I'd just have this be nice and wide open. But again, maybe a dual helm vessel and close it with an enclosed bimini might be something to consider. Things to, things to think about for sure. Uh, let me catch up on some comments. Scott, do you have any insight? Marlo Hunter will start building the sailboats now. Uh, I do not know, Scott. Unfortunately. Charter companies, yes. Living on a boat, you really want, yes. Your ease of access into and out of the boats, very, very important. Um, you know, now if you compare that Hunter 40 uh, for this same price as this one, you get a much, much larger boat. Ease of access into and out of the boat is much, much easier. Um, and then you have a larger cockpit. You can enclose this all in with an enclosed bimini and just make a large outdoor sunroom. Yes. Free range. I love the Beneteau Oceanus 38. The reason is the removable bulkhead and the forward. So it opens it up. I like wide open boats. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, there's too much room. You're going to go flying across the cabin. First of all, you should always have three points of contact on your vessel, whether you're inside the vessel or outside the vessel, underway. You will 100% go flying across the cabin. It just happened to me. Um, I tend to never hold on because I'm an idiot. And I always wear socks. So when I'm underway and I go down to the cabins, <laughs> like I was on a 419 on a delivery, and I flew from the galley up in the air, across the boat, hit the door to the head, 
Then I flew back across, landed on the counter of the kitchen, and then back across, hit the door, and landed on the floor. Uh, so you should always hold on. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, you know, Catalina 35s are nice, but again, a 20-year-old boat for 106 k I'm not into it. Beneteau first, more for racing. Uh, Island Packets, 35, it's really like a 26-foot boat. As far as your livable space goes on board. Old Pacific Seacraft Pilot House. Interesting, old, and expensive. Um, now, if you're going to be in cold climates, something like this may work for you. If you're going to be specifically in cold climates, you've got skeg hung rudder, things like that. But a lot of trip hazards on the deck. Very, very small cockpit. But in cold climates, you're not going to spend a bunch of time out there. But down below, it's really janky. Not a lot of room. Not something I would recommend. Uh, let's see. Catch up on some comments here. Most places in Florida have gone through the roof. Yes, Florida is outrageous. I was looking the other day at uh, Key Largo rentals. Uh, early C. And it's like four grand a month for a two-bedroom. It's absurd. Uh, all the smaller marinas. Yes, they have been bought up by construction. Yes, true. Yep. Basically. Kyle, you're very, very welcome. Uh, I wonder if Tim's watching right now. Getting Oh, probably. Idiot. Um... Hunter Passage 420. I would take the 420, Kyle. You just, you tend to get, it's laid out a bit better than the 40, than the Beneteau 40cc, Kyle. Uh, and so it's a little bit more user friendly, but you get more room. Kind of, you can grow more into it than out of it. Lady K is really can't afford the ocean. It's 45, so he's shopping for smaller, probably. Uh, how do you end up living on a boat when you only have about 5k to spend? That's difficult, Robert. In a situation like that, um, my suggestion would honestly be to try and crew as much as you can so you can get on the water and get out there and get some experience again you can go to like crew finder on facebook and you can sometimes get on some things um if you're a member over on my patreon members area uh, i do deliveries all the time all over the country thousands of miles um i'll always invite my patrons on board to go on deliveries with me whether you have experience or not so I'd recommend, if your budget's 5k, I would recommend trying to get on as many as you can, go sailing, uh, and then just work and save. And then really what I would do is I would narrow it down to one or two boats that I really, really wanted. Um, and then I would save and I would just be scouring for those boats. And then I would just try to get one the best deal I could. So it'll take some time, but get like a five-year plan together for it is what I would do. Uh, for sure. Because it can be done. And we're cruising right along. A lot of old boats for sale in this 100K range. Portland, Oregon, notoriously high on prices. Uh, Troy, what's up, my man? Troy's got a 141DS. Good to see you, Troy. How's the uh, Caribbean treating you? Yep, Novak on Vincent and Managua Chain of Virginia Functional Sailing Boats. Yep, never seen him. Uh, Robert, you really can't harbor some Yes, true. Uh, for a while, yep, 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 yeah, Robert. Yeah, find a sugar mama. It's a good, it's a good, uh, good plan. They still are. All right. Troy, how's things going? And uh, where are you at? St. Lucia? Troy's a member of my members area. He got the consulting package. We got him 141 DS. Uh, he's living the dream down there. If you were friends with him on Facebook, you would see he's always uh, sitting on some beach, swimming, doing something. Uh, 393 is nice, but again, single helm, too small. I think there's bigger boats and better boats for that price. A lot of it comes down to a price point. Uh, these older canoe sterns. That's like a full-blown, full-blown canoe stern. Uh, so, that's an A. What's this? A thirty-six I. Thirty-six I. Gosh, almost like I know what I'm talking about. Docker. These I like. This is way too high. You can sometimes grab these thirty-six eyes for like seventy k. There was one here not long ago for seventy k. Fantastic boat for a single sailor or a couple looking to cruise the Caribbean or even cross the Atlantic separate shower fantastic storage on these um nice little boat like I said you can normally get them for 70 not 110 I don't know what in the world that person's thinking on that price uh how's the guy who had demasting I don't know I don't talk to him anymore uh we had a falling out when I was delivering his boat from uh Florida to Puerto Rico when I left the boat in Nassau because the guy was uh uh, does Tim still have his boat? He hasn't showed his old boat in a long... Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, 
Don't forget, ladies and gents, likes are free. 110 of you guys watching. Hit that like button, baby. We got 98 likes, so we're only 12 off. So 12 of you out there listening to this radio voice. Should do like sailing ASMR. Fall asleep to sailing. This is a lot of boat for this money. 110k for 10466. Again, same problem. I don't like the uh, single helm, but that's a lot of boat for the money. So some sacrifices and compromises can be made. Just think of it like a relationship. Compromising. Why do you have a spinnaker pull on your... Hmm. Interesting. In mast furler, shaken bacon, steel arches. Probably got the canvas in there somewhere. Ooh, he's got fender racks. Somebody at some point is pretentious. Looking bad. Okay, let's get to the inside. Come on. That's a horrible picture. There you go. A little better. Do these dishes will kill somebody underway. This is a boat that does not sail because dishes like that will kill somebody. See, a lot of room on these hunters. Great bang for the buck in the hunters. I'm telling you. I'm here to tell you. A lot of bang for the buck. Bristol, again, depends. You know, great boats for their time. Just get a little bit too old. Same thing with Tanya's, Catalina's. No. Uh, ba -dum -ba. Radio voice, face made for radio. Could be. It could be, my man. Could be. Why do people see Marina's? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, why is that your comment? That's a good point. I'm not sure why. Probably the water. If you are on the fence about a consulting package, do it. Chris helped us find the perfect boat for us, and he saved us thousands of dollars and kept. Yep. Thanks, Troy. Appreciate it. Gerald, what's up, my man? <laughs> I think I'm going to be leaving the Caribbean soon, actually, moving to the mainland. Golf is a washing machine. That's true. We love our hunter. Yeah, they're great. True, true, true. What? If we were to do maintenance, I'd consider golf area. I found an island packet catamaran. What? What? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. That guy always copies my content all the time. You can literally just go watch any video of his and then just go back and watch the same video of mine. And he just copies me verbatim. Anyway, 103 by 6, 2004, too much money. Oceanus 461, 112. That's a lot of bang for the buck. A um, lot of bang for the buck. And in this case, I'd probably take that 146 over this 461. Get a lot more stuff. Adventures with EJ. Thanks for stopping by. Just got home from work and jumped on your site. Which is the best? All 50 around. Um, I like leopards. Adventures with EJ. They're laid out really, really well. Uh, in my humble opinion. I know they all look the same, but they're, they're very user friendly. Uh, in my opinion. Hit that like button, ladies and gents. Make the guy famous. Island Packet 35. No, too old. Catalina, nope. No. What's this? 40 DS. That's a good price for a Genoa Dex Salon. Um, the 40 DS isn't that big. It's like 36 length waterline. If I remember correctly, let's pull it up. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Let me pull it up and see how far off I am. What'd I say? I said 36, right? Oh, 33. I was off. Yeah, that's the problem with the 40. It feels bigger because of Dexalon. Ooh, that's the damage. Yeah, that's small. Can't do it. Can't do it. I thought it was 36, 33 is even worse. 142 passage, endeavor catch, no. 10. Troy's got one of these, but he's got the deck salon. 
but the Hunter 41 deck salon is much, much bigger than the Juno 40 deck salon. The only difference, you have a single helm versus a dual helm. Um, things to consider. I hate this railing stuff. Still don't. Oh, my land. Come on, dude. Why are you showing this, man? Replace your windlass. It's all jacked up. A lot of water damage here. Our water came in. Didn't shut your hatches often? Yeah, why? see how much room you get in these things? Crazy. Oh, this one's kind of a dumpster, but I'm telling you, man. Hunter's good bang for the buck. Again, we discuss center cockpits. What the questions? The catamaran? So confused. Yeah, I said leopard, not lagoon. Leopard. The lagoon 440, I think, is the one that the bulkhead issue. 7272. Gerald, I just did a delivery. Uh, where was I? Oh, where was I? It wasn't even that long ago, like four months ago. It's on my channel. Um, But. One of my patrons is like 72 or 73. And he came on the delivery from Virginia to Bermuda, Bermuda to Puerto Rico. Um, had the time of his life. Absolute legend. Um, it can absolutely be done, Gerald. See, and a lot of it, you have to, again, consider what you're doing. So let's look here. So 115K, 115K, right? This one's 16 years newer, so you're going to get a lot more life out of this boat. This one. Now, people can say this one was built better, blah, 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 blew out of this, that, the other thing. The reality is this one's going to last you longer. It's going to be less in running costs. It's going to be a bigger boat as far as livable space on board. And it'll be capable of doing all the same things this one does, but this one's going to be much, much more comfortable as far as a full-time liveaboard. That's just a fact. It's just reality. This is a ton of boat for the money. Uh, Gordon, thank you, Chris. Yes. Yeah, he's cool. Does the Hunter and Catalina's and 30, 40, 40 foot range have stay hung rudders? No, does not, Richard. Um, so it would depend um, on where you're sailing. Like for me, I don't need a skeg hung rudder. I would prefer a free hung rudder. The reason for that is a skeg hung rudder, the skeg will protect your rudder uh, if you're to run into a reef or something. Uh, but what it can do, depending on how fast you hit, uh, is it can actually break that skeg and cause structural stress cracks in the hull of your vessel. Uh, if you hit it hard enough, it can actually tear a hole in it. I prefer a freestanding rudder because it'll just break away. And then I'm out the four grand for another rudder, but I'm not out 20 grand to get my boat hold and repaired structurally. If I hit something hard enough. I've never actually hit my rudder on anything in my life, um, not in 30 years of sailing. Um, so I think that's really more of a captain problem. I like these chairs. These are awesome, actually. I, I sure like these. Um, but that's just, again, Richard, just my personal opinion. Um, so I'm not saying one's better than the other. That's just how I do it. Daryl will do it sooner or later. Yes, true story. Ralph killed it, yeah. Yeah, Ralph's on, uh... Let me look it up. Have you ever sailed across an ocean? On a sailboat surrounded by... Hold on. Somewhere. Where was I? Yeah, Ralph's in these videos. That's me. Um, there he is. There's Rob right there. Actually. <laughs> Tanks, what's up, my man? Long time no see. Gosh, I was getting worried about you, buddy. Haven't heard you on the members area. You're having nothing. Packing yachts? Um, I mean, to be honest... That guy does a fantastic job at marketing them. Uh, I think he's wrong. Um, and I don't think Krakens justify the price. That's too new of a boat manufacturer. 
Uh, whereas if you take something like a Moody that's been around for 40 years or something, um, I took this. It was so cool uh, with all these stars out there. Anyway, um, it's just a boat builder that hasn't been around that long. Doesn't mean they're good or bad. They just don't have a lot of experience firsthand with that particular vessel. So in my opinion, spending a million dollars or 1.5 um, on a boat like that, you could, uh, you know, wind up three, four years down the road with a major structural issue that wasn't caught earlier. And there's just a lot of things to consider. I'm not saying that they're good or bad. Uh, here's Milo. Got him a 50 footer. Lance, we got a 473. Uh, and there's Ralph. Uh, this dude's 70 something years old. Can you believe that? Guy looks like a whippersnapper there. Tanks, my man! Legend. Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Just do it! Do now, on this trip was my birthday, actually. And he's the only person on the whole trip that did anything for my birthday. Uh, he had the waiters bring me like a cake and sing me happy birthday. Uh, super, super, I mean, I just, I can't say enough good things about him. Really, really cool guy. Uh, thanks again. Thank you so much. Good point. Grounding rudders. Yeah, you're welcome. It's just something to consider, Richard. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I want to get a skate hung rudder case. I hit anything. First of all, don't hit anything. If you do, and you hit it hard enough, again, you can cause those structural cracks in your vessel along the grid on the bottom can rip off that skeg uh, and then the boat needs a whole haul out whereas a freestanding rudder it's fairly easy that bad boy breaks away pull out your emergency one um get to shore and just order a new one slap it on no big deal easy cheesy lemon breezy would a skeg hung rudder last longer probably that orca thing is actually becoming a problem which is surprising discoveries haven't given it much thought man Oh, did it? Yeah. That's the thing. Your bilges can't keep up with much. I was on a boat just a couple months ago. Where was I? Uh, Water Island, the USBIs, and the uh, bow thruster broke. And then a bunch of water was coming inside. And the bilge pump only lasts. So, like, we called to get it repaired. The guys couldn't show up until, like, the next day next afternoon but by the next morning the bilge pump had burnt out obviously so we're off to shore to rush and get another one messed up some of the electronics and they had to come and patch it and do all this stuff um so water coming in your boat obviously is a big big problem so i would prefer my rudder just to break away i'll eat the cost versus what can lead to a much much bigger issue uh, so let's answer some questions how well does lance's dog do it does great now, I am not a fan of dogs on vessels. I love Lance's dog. Great dog. Lance has done a great job at training him. But I hate animals on vessels. They get dog hair everywhere. Uh, they're always in the way. When there's rough season stuff, that dog freaks out. I just don't think it's good for the animals. Just my humble opinion. Again, thanks. Thanks for the uh, super chat. Most of the dock parties end up on our hunter due to the room in the cockpit and salon also. Yeah, I know. You need to get up here, Troy, before I leave. Yeah, we were underway. Like when the dog was first on the boat on our way from Virginia to Bermuda. And like the dog two or three days without pooping. It was two days, two and a half days, three or something like that. And then just dropped one right in the cockpit. David? <laughs> uh -huh. I was like, dude. Uh... Yeah, I was like, dude. And then just peed and pooped all over the... Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, Skag Hunters don't back up very well. That's also true. I'm 62, plan to retire. Nice. Sailing the Caribbean's fun. Uh, Water Island's fantastic. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but... I'll show you really quick. I'll show you some stuff since we're here. That's not going to work. 
Have you ever sailed across an ocean <laughs> on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight, without even the possibility? Uh, bingo, bingo. I live here. Viva Las Puerto Rico. Spanish Virgin Islands. Super overrated. Nothing there. People are... Anyway. Um, Water Island. This island right here. And this right here is one of the coolest places. Little Honeymoon Beach. So when I was there, I've been there a bunch. But So we anchored out here. And I don't even... I just swim to shore. <laughs> It's a long ways and everybody thinks I'm crazy, but, uh, I just swim to shore. Uh, and you can see this on like a bunch of my videos too. So you grab a mooring ball way out here. I just swim to shore. Water's gorgeous. But they got this super cool restaurant right over here. Uh, this was all torn down in the hurricane. This stuff is not there. Um, but a great little place to hang out. Oh. Uh, so yeah in the usvi is the caribbean is a great place to cruise because you have so many places to anchor uh the problem with like the usvis is there's only one place really to do boat work and it's over here in red hook this marina sucks um there's like the little part of town right here that's about all there is you can take a little tuk tuk for two bucks just go stand on the corner wait take you basically anywhere on the island charlotte amella Pretty gnarly. Uh, little dangerous there. Uh, and then, like, as you hop down the island chain, St. John's, um, like, one of my favorite places. Uh, all right, I'll turn around here. Yeah. So, Cruise Bay, another big, I'm another I'm a big, big fan of Cruise Bay. Uh, this is also very, very pretty. If you see what was Shane's, uh, Hey, there's Ralph. Ralph, I was just talking about you. You missed it. What did the James P. guy say? I missed it. Uh, anyway, this is another cool beach. Uh, I like St. John a lot. Probably one of my favorite places. But anyway, back to sailing stuff. <coughs> I missed a... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, um, yeah, I missed uh, Shane P.'s comment. Whatever. Oh, I can view it. What was it? I need a hug. Sometimes I think I need a hug. Why would I need a hug? You creep. Uh, okay. Uh, try, I have a friend with an ML, and my hunter is much faster. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just the reality, Troy. Those MLs are. Uh, I mean, anyway. Uh, have you run any issues with importing boats? No, I have not. Uh, not into the states. Ever selling out quote ten thousand? <laughs> Ralph, what's up, my man? Yeah, I was just talking about you. Your wife said you can't. Uh, I like the hundred excellence, Brian. Those are probably my favorite. Like the, I think it's the 41 or 42 Jackson. Troy's got one. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dexalons overall, as far as monoholes are my favorite. They're just, I mean, they're just usually expensive. Uh, these sabers are nice, but again, it's just the older style. Uh, that's too much for a 38. Catalina's again, always much these pdq boats i don't like at all uh 77 marshall 26 what is that like made of gold for 117k 17k tall rigs i don't like just causes problems for bridges usually depending on how tall the rig is which this is like a 36 i i'm guessing oceanus clipper oh 373 oh 36 i that's the stupid you know. my bad um So yeah, the 100k price range, 90 to 100k, not a lot on the market. There's a couple. Uh, the boat market kind of sucks right now. Actually. Uh, so any questions in the uh, chat? Before I... Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. But uh, any questions in chat? Any boats? What do we got? These are... I guess we gotta look up catamarans. Uh, let's look up some catamarans. 
only bummer with catamarans is the entry price. Yeah, Troy, I like the hunter. Yeah, I'm a fan of the hunter of the dark zone. Sure. If I can find it, Buck, I will. In 2025, Shane? I'm not sure. Uh, I, would kind of, I mean, it depends a lot on the economy and what it's doing. Uh, if they're going to uh, keep it up here with this artificial inflation stuff. All right. So you get yourself a Hobie Cat entry level. If you don't have anywhere to go, thinking about a trailer sailor and you wanted to just learn how to sail, I legitimately would do a Hobie Cat. I swear to God. Uh, you don't have to do a brand new one, but go grab one for 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. Get out there, sail, flip it, do all that kind of stuff. Um, the price low to high and I'm just rocking with the manufacturer's listings. Um, again, catamarans fall into the same category as monohulls. Once you go back this old, you're going to kind of wind up like, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, this guy. Now, super nice guy. Him and his girlfriend broke up. Feel bad for him. Uh, seems like a nice enough guy. But again, really, really likes catamarans. Uh, so he bought this really, really old one and having to do all this work. Just keep that in mind if you're thinking about buying something for 20K. Not saying it can't be done, but it's definitely things to consider. Uh, Stefan, Stefan, speaking of cats, what are your thoughts on the build quality of Bollies? I've heard they're not very durable. I don't have a lot of personal experience with them, Stephen. Um, at first glance, I would agree. I wouldn't think they're very durable. They're not built, they're not built very well. Uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm just going price low to high. Same thing with these Prouts. Uh, both this old Catamarans, this price range, going to require a lot of work. Uh, -bum -bum. I mean, if a guy just wanted to live on a boat, though, you know, and cruise the Caribbean, it can definitely be done on something like this for sure. Um... Interesting stuff here. Mobile, Alabama. Endeavor. Routes. Yeah, usual suspects. See how quickly you jump up in price, but you stay way old. That's the problem. A guppy, 13. Nice. Yeah. Do you like them? Or no? They look kind of like, um, if I remember correctly, they look kind of like, uh, like a life raft from like a cruise ship. <laughs> um, what strategy to import a boat where, from where to where, Jot? Uh, it depends on where you're at, Jot. If you're coming from the Caribbean, it's a 1% import tax. Uh, and then you just go register it like normal. It's really, really easy. Um. Uh -huh. Just one percent, and then I would do. I'd probably taxes are gonna get you. Um, sometimes, you know, you pay one percent import tax, then you're gonna pay a sales tax on it probably when you go to register it, depending on where you're at. Um, so those are things to consider. But if you go somewhere like Delaware, you can avoid that. It used to be really, really easy to open up an LLC in Delaware do it but they've made it quite a bit harder um, just things to consider but just look to where you can do that the cheapest at um, so I'd go somewhere with no sales tax oh from Europe to the United States same thing 1% import tax and then just pick somewhere cheap to register it uh, and then with the VAT tax on like a with a uh European boat. Sometimes you can get the VAT tax taken off the vessel if you're not going to register it in Europe. Uh, sometimes you can negotiate. And the VAT tax is like 8%. So it's quite a big savings. Um, you know, 
If I was looking for a cheap catamaran under 100 grand, I'd probably grab one of these Gemini 105s. These PDQs, I don't like. They're not built very well. Again, these inexpensive catamarans, these are not ocean-going, ocean-crossing vessels. Um, this would be more like a Caribbean, Bahamas type thing. Could have a great time on it. Um, you know, and I would do something like one of these newer 105 MCs, especially for 85K. And this one's been for sale for like two years. The guy actually died. Um, looks like they finally figured out the red tape there and sold it. Yeah, you can always you uh, you can always Coast Guard register your vessel. You won't pay any taxes. Uh, some states like Florida, they can get pretty sticklerish about the 90 day thing. If it's there for more uh, more than 90 days, then they want you to register it with them and pay the sales tax. So again, it comes down to what state where you're at. But you can always go to the Caribbean. The Caribbean's like in the Wild West. Um, what? And something like this is worth considering if somebody's thinking about spending a hundred grand on a boat and want to go to the Caribbean. I'm like, this might work. I didn't do any pictures, but whatever. Uh, I thought it was wicked expensive to get a European boat because of tax. I live north. Yeah. So it's if the VAT tax is already paid free range, um, you know, because you're paying another 8%, but you only have to pay it if you're going to register it in a European country. A lot of times you can get that discounted off of the boat. If it's already been paid, a lot of times you can get it discounted off. Uh, and then you just take the boat to the United States. Why do some say ads can't buy in the... Why do some... Oh, why do some ads say you can't buy in the U.S.? Uh, because of that VAT tax, it's already paid and they don't want to take it off of the price. So they just don't want to sell this in the United States. How does Florida know you're there for more than 90 days? Florida, fish and wildlife, the fish and game in Florida is insane. Um, and getting stopped in Florida is super, super common because those dudes are on the water, like no tomorrow. And you'll always, always get stopped there. They wind up stopping you. You'll get stopped more than once. And then they're going to be like, Hey, you've been here for longer than X, Y, Z. Um, had a client buy a boat there, but he was bringing it to the Caribbean and they were like, well, you have to leave by this date or else you got to pay $18,000 in sales tax. Um, 2,000 moorings, 3,800. Yeah, not a lot going on here either. Uh -huh. Telling the Gemini 105 MCs, the best deal probably under 100K. Then these 150 ones, it's kind of just this, like the land of the lost and the 150 to 200K catamaran. You don't really get back into good ones uh, until like 200K. Sometimes you can find decent deals. Like this is an all right boat, but it's in the Philippines. Eh, kind of hard. Sea winds are not notoriously great boats. How much would it cost to help bring it from the from Europe? That's the problem. Free range is that's going to be really really expensive. So if it was just you and you were going to sail it, maybe it could be doable. Because then you just got flights, hotel, show up, provision, boom, cross back across. But if you have to hire a captain or something, then you got to pay their flights, their hotels, their food for the three weeks of the trip, uh, and then generally like five hundred bucks a day. So getting one back from the United States to hire a captain is going to cost you like 10 grand, maybe even 15. Um, you are welcome. Love Kratos. The problem with buying about Europe, they're all wired. Yes. And they all are wired for 220. So you got to get adapters or rewire it. If you plan on rewiring it, it's too expensive. You might as well just buy in the United States or run around with adapters. Uh, those can also be expensive for your shore power, but things to consider. Um, <coughs> Then the guy earlier that asked about the Bali's. Uh, as you can see, they're incredibly cheap comparatively to their counterparts. Um, not a boat I would buy. They're just not. Oh, they don't even have any pictures. Good job. Just one computer generated picture. Nice one. 139 for the 95. Huh. Oh, I passed the island packet. I like these freestyle 37s. They're not for liveaboard, but uh, 135, did he say? 139, 139. This one. 
Miss Kitty. See, for this price, I'd just do the Gemini. You're going to get a newer one. Very, very similar as far as room goes and saleability. This one's got a pretty, that's a really, really low bridge deck clearance. It's going to slap a lot. It's going to be noisy in there. Uh, it does have an enclosed cockpit. Georgetown, South Carolina. 9.9. .9. Don't ever buy a 9.9. .9. Everybody, always get a 15 if you can. Never buy a 9.9. .9. All right. Whenever you can ever get to the interior pictures. Whenever you're ready, boat. It's really, really wide open. Steep. It's very, very steep. Something to consider. So, depending on how nimble you are. But I like the wide open concept they got going on up here. So, pros and cons. Again, another step down there. I don't like that. Um, just things to uh, consider. It's an old microwave. Toastmaster, baby. We got a Toastmaster. What does it say? Front press wash hose. All right. This guy's like, you know what? You've got that walkie tie. <laughs> All right. See, usually when I'm when I'm looking at older boats like this, you know, 95 or something, what I'm looking for is for this stuff to have been updated. So this is the original radio. What I'm looking for is somebody to have taken care of the vessel and upgraded that stuff because again, it's 30 years old almost. Um, I mean, everything else seems well taken care of at first glance. Uh, this is kind of a pain in the butt. Got to go over the bed to get to a closet. Kind of a nightmare. Um, other than that, I mean, just some minor stuff. I'll break my foot right here. Ow, for sure I'm breaking my toe. 100%. I got it. Wow, so better to buy... Yes, better to buy in the Caribbean. Yeah. Thanks, my man. Buy in the Caribbean. No watch the bound middle. Yes. And again, Gemini, perfect if you're going to coastal cruise and island hop. Love Eric's channel, but was in reference to you. What happened? What happened, Gordon? Uh, so back to the back to the jam, back to the lecture at hand. Anybody know that song? Anybody remember that song? Back to the lecture at hand. You're welcome, Buck. If you work with a U.S. broker to travel... No. No. No, brokers are pretty useless. Uh, Adventures with EJ. Uh, I mean, they're not going to do anything. Like, if you get, like, a buying broker, they're not going to go to... You know, if they did, you'd be paying them a bunch of money um, to do that. <laughs> but all they really do is push paper. Things to consider. Lagoon 380s are nice, but again, if you're wealthy and you're going to spend 180k just yourself or something, maybe. Yeah, and like I said, like the 140, 200 and some change is like no man's land of uh, catamarans. Ah, wrong page. I mean, the Lagoon 380s I like, but they're just expensive. Leopard 38. Sea winds are... Lagoon 380. I mean, that's a big boat for 220k. Yep. <laughs> Bearded Weirdo knows that. <laughs> I fired two brokers. Found I knew... Yeah. Yeah, they just want the thing to stay high. You're welcome, EJ. That's the thing. So with a broker, a broker has a dog in the fight. Uh, EJ, that's what you gotta think. Now he's gonna get paid ten percent. Um, it'll usually be split if there's a buying and selling broker. So get five percent of the sale price. So his goal is to try to sell you a boat that he has both the selling, so both the listing and the buyer on the boat, so that he gets the full ten percent of the sale price. So oftentimes you'll hire a buying broker 
and he's only going to show you vessels where he can be both the selling broker and represent you as the buyer so he can get the whole 10% of the vessel. Something to absolutely keep in mind uh, when it comes to things like that. They have a dog in the fight. Their goal is to get you to spend more money so they make more money. Whereas you could just hire me as a consultant for a one-time fee, and my only goal is to get you the right boat. Things to think about. And now you know. Oh, that must be a uh, that's a partial. A 52-foot catamaran's a huge boat. I don't know how many 52s you guys have seen in person, but they are giant in person. It's like, oh my lanta. There's a channel that has a Fountain Peugeot 42, I think. I forgot the name of the channel. Sailing Kiwis? Sailing Kiwis? I don't know what it is. We're moving, we're shaking, we're baking, we're cooking, we're booking. David. So better to buy in the Caribbean, yes. The ideal Caribbean boat. Uh what's the ideal Caribbean boat? So you want a dual aft helm, open cockpit, um, large swim platform, walk through transom, clear decks on the vessel, no tripping hazards. Um are gonna be your main features to look for and then a length of the waterline versus length overall with as small of a discrepancy as possible between the two numbers ideally three feet or less that's what you're trying to go for there david a lot of these lagoon 380s lagoon 440 had the issues with the bulkhead so that might make me leery of the 380 it does have this one's got the uh fiberglass arch Uh, Kyle, if you're in, so California is notoriously high priced on vessels, Kyle. Um, I don't know how much experience you have sailing, but you might want to look at Mexico. The sailing up the coast of California is relatively easy. There's just a couple of points that you got to go a bit further out, um, down there around San Diego when you're going up the Californian coast, but getting it from Mexico to California up to San Francisco should be fairly easy. So, and you'd probably get a better price off the coast of Mexico than you would the coast of California. Uh, no, you're not required to keep it there. You'll have to pay the 1% import tax and the sales tax in Florida or uh, California. California got some out of control taxes. Oh no, I gotta put you guys on hold. I'll be back in not long. Have you ever sailed across an ocean on a sailboat surrounded by sea with no land in sight, without even the possibility of sighting land for days to come? To stand at the helm of your destiny. I want that one more time. I want another meal in Paris. I want another bottle of wine. And then another. stand on summits and smoke Cubans and feel the sun on my face for as long as I can. Right before we get into this, don't forget, head on over to my patron. It's only $10 a month and you right, have access to my private members area. With Here we are. Yes, I'm a robot. Uh, I think Chris is a secret spy. He never shows us. I'm on camera. <laughs> um... So the reason I'm not on camera a lot, well, there's a bunch of reasons, but number one, people are crazy. So when I made those videos recently about other YouTubers, people were like just running around saying all kinds of nonsense that just wasn't true. Um, saying like, I've never sailed, even though I'm on camera sailing thousands of miles and all this stuff. Um, 
And then they always try to get into your personal life and try to disrupt your personal life any way that they can. So, um, I don't like that stuff. I like my anonymity. And then the other reason, um, is I will always choose violence. So if I'm in public and I get recognized a lot as it is, because again, even though I've only got 35,000 subscribers, I get more views than a lot of these million subscriber channels. Um, so if somebody is running their mouth online and forums about me and stuff, and they see me in person and run up to me running their mouth, I'm always going to choose violence in that scenario. And then I wind up getting in trouble. So I just like to be left alone. Don't want people muddling in my personal life and running up to me trying to cause problems. I'm not a small person, um, like six foot, 215 pounds. I'm always going to choose violence. If you come up to me in person and start running your mouth. So I just like to avoid those issues. Uh, and again, like I had a GoFundMe and people were donating money to just say, this is a scam. Like you're giving me money to like just nonsense. So I just don't like that stuff. People are crazy. Um, you know, lots of circumnavigation dreams dying together. Yes, they really, really do. Next month's price should come down for the winter. Um, let me catch up on some chats here. Uh, yeah, next month. Good advice. Thank you. Chris has changed back. Three foot draft. Uh, I love this guy narrating about the same life. He really means what he's saying. <laughs> All right, back to it. So yeah, catamarans. Then you go up from the 200 range. Really got to go up to like 350. Work anything good. Why do boat building companies have an aversion to building boats that don't need to be constantly fixed? I don't know, man. Uh, it's better to repair the problem from, I don't know. We see gang that's actually very interesting. So Caribbean and Panama. Yes, Caribbean and Panama. A lot of sailboat dreams die in Panama. Everybody goes through the Panama Canal one way or the other. By the time they're done, a lot of times people break up or they're just over it. Sailing's a lot of hard work, regardless of what boat you have. It's constant maintenance, constant upkeep. It's really, really hard on relationships. That's why you see a lot of these breakups on YouTube channels. So yeah, a lot of times people with little experience buy boats. They get out there with their girlfriend. They sail for a few months. Relationship falls apart. Boat goes up for sale. Generally happens in places like the Caribbean or either side of the Panama Canal. They love being called potatoes. True. Dingaroo, the train wreck just posted a video. I didn't know, but he does check. Yeah, he was charging a bunch of money for his charters on his boat. He, like, stopped doing YouTube to do that. You couldn't pay me enough money to sail with that guy. He's literally sank more boats than the Kraken. Um, wouldn't catch me dead on a boat with him. I can only hope that Chris will call me a potato one day. Someday. Always gonna choose violence. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. <laughs> That could be a t-shirt. Always choose violence. I think I was telling you that the other day when we were talking about that Facebook post. I'm like, my man, I'm not on camera because I'm always going to choose violence, my man. <laughs> could be, for sure. Uh, Sailing Puhana has got a hunter. Sailing Puhana has 141. 10410 I think it's 10410 <laughs> Earl's like Earl's like always choose violence my new friend <laughs> Yep Yep 10410 If I remember correctly I think let me see here. I think that I have video. People are like, we never see you sailing. I just have hours and hours. Okay. Anyway. Um I've got you somewhere here. No, 
This is Roger. That's Roger's 410 DS, but I thought... Can I catch you on one too? That's Roger's, right? I got you on one. This must not be that video. Uh, maybe it's not up anymore. I don't know, you're here somewhere. I don't know where it's at. I had to do. True. <laughs> True. Could be. <coughs> uh, yeah, so there we go. All right, what else we got? Questions, concerns, comments? Would you guys like to speak to a manager? <laughs> I'll let him know that uh, you have a complaint. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, David. A lot of people have met me in person, talked to, you know, like at boat shows and stuff. Like my patrons, like at last year, I met like 40 people there, flew in from all over the world. Uh, we had dinners every night, went out, had a good time, looked at boats together. Uh, I've done multiple deliveries on my channel. Like a lot of these... Um, app. I was like, what is this nonsense? I don't do this... So here we are, uh, we're on Milo's 50 footer, cruising around uh, in Nassau, not Nassau, no, we're in USBIs. There's St. John, that beach I was telling you about. And so this is me filming, it's not like I'm, I just, uh, I'm just, I just don't stare at the camera. That's a patron of mine, uh, super cool guy. So I mean... I'm always sailing. I just don't, uh, you know. Let me see if I can uh, do something here. Let me see if I can. I don't know if you guys can hear this. No, you can't. Maybe you can. You guys can hear that, right? Sailing sad face. You guys can hear this video though, right? No, you can't hear it. What? Oh, hold on. How about now? Still can't hear it? Okay, here, start it over. I just feel like everyone tries to do something different, but they always wind up doing the same damn thing. So, all of these people you see, so I filmed all of this, uh, probably echoing. Well, it's just a piano sound. There's no like actual sound. Um, so anyway, um, so all of these people, these are all patrons of mine. So this guy flew from Ireland over here to come. Um, that's Lance. I helped him buy an Oceanus 473 and his dog. And then we're here in San Juan. That's uh, Brian, another member. Uh, I bring him on all my trips. He's like my first mate. Uh, this person right here, another member, brought him uh, on a delivery. 
Um, look at all my rock stars. <laughs> That's all I do is make rock stars. This is Wes. I helped him buy this boat that we're on right here. It's a Geno 419. Did a delivery from Puerto Rico to North Carolina. Um, so I'm always sailing. I'm just not a sailing vlogger, you know? Um, so I don't, uh, I don't show like my face. It's not about me. It's about the sailing all the time. Uh, so here's a delivery. One second. Yeah. Microphone echo. Is it still, it shouldn't be echoing now. Hold on. Let me change that. Okay, so we shouldn't have an echo now. So here I'm in, uh, where am I? I'm in Bermuda. This guy's boat broke away and wound up underneath the ferry. <laughs> and there he is in the water. I just start filming. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> um, yeah, so we're over here. Uh, so like, but again, I'm on another delivery for another member's vessel that I helped buy the vessel. And we're sailing thousands of miles. Um, like, I think that trip was 14 or 1500. Um, so then here I am in Nassau, I think. No, I'm in Carolina here. Um, right here. I'm in Nassau here. So another delivery. So I'm always on boats. I'm always sailing. I sail thousands and thousands of miles every year. Uh, and a lot of it's filmed and recorded. I just don't stare into the camera. I'm never like, oh, look at me. Oh, uh, New Year's Eve last year in Miami, taking a boat from Miami to uh, the Bahamas across the Gulf Stream. Uh, and so this is on a Genoa 409. Uh, and so there we are cruising. So yeah, I'm always sailing. Um, I just not a stare to the camera person. You know what I mean? Uh, the audio from the beach. Shh. Microphone echo in the water. No, no, it was, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, there are more than one Carolina. Was it best? There's North Carolina and South Carolina. I always forget where I go. Like, if you look at my passport, it's insane. Like, you'll see, like, entered NASA February 1st, entered NASA February 20th, entered NASA February 27th. Like, I'm always, my passport looks like a collector's edition stamp book. Um, I'm just not a stare into the camera vlogger. You know what I mean? Uh, who's boats this? Oh, this guy's from, uh, the Netherlands. He's a, was a member. I brought him over to go on this delivery too. Uh, he's a chef. Hence this. Cause like, if you see me cooking on a boat, I literally will just open up a can of cold chili and throw it in a bag of Fritos and just grab a spoon. Like I'm not the, uh, cook in the sea type of dude. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm always sailing, all the time. And then what, I forgot what we were doing. What is doing here? Um, so people are like I've never seen him sail. I'm sailing all the time. I just won't stare to the camera, looking like an idiot. Uh, Lance four seven three. We're in San Juan, leaving San Juan. That's where this is at. And then we're coming out, and there's <coughs> big rollers coming in. I was like. I'm supposed to be this today. Um, then I went from here to... I forgot where I went. Aguadilla or something stupid. Puerto Rico. You can never tell, like, the size of the waves, but this is Oceanus 473, and for it to be moving this much, you know that... Uh, getting after it out there. It's just me, him, and his dog. So I'm always sailing. Just not a vlogger. Uh, Chris, could it be that you stub your toes on bows because you don't ever build muscle memory due to being a problem? That's probably why early C. Like I'll literally trip over all that stuff. Um, you know, I'm always on different boats with different people. And then, like I said, I have a delivery coming up next month. No, what month is it? October, November? Yeah, next month. Uh, where are you going from? Either the BVIs or USBI up to, uh, the Carolinas again. I think it's South Carolina this time. Uh, with another patron of mine, who I helped buy a boat who has no sailing experience and wants to bring people that don't have sailing experience. So it'll just be me with experience. 
Uh, and that'll be like uh, 1,300 miles, probably what that'll wind up being, something like that. But I'll bang that out in like three days. Uh, I really, really like these. For Caribbean sailing. Coastal Cruise and Island Hopping. Gemini 35 Legacy. They're laid out really, really nice. Things pretty wide open. Lots of headroom in there. The master suite on these is great. The forward. Right here. Uh, 72. Want an island hopper? Yes. Can you? Yeah. Gerald, sign up for consulting. It's right over my website, chasinglatitudes.com. Uh, then I'll get you over to the members area. Tons of people in my members area. Show So my members area, there's always, and there's hundreds and hundreds of people over here all talking about sailing and wanting to buy boats and doing this. Uh, inter introduce yourself over here. Uh, sailing chat, just chatting. YouTube video discussion on other YouTubers. Boat show in 22 when I was going. Uh, um, all kinds of stuff. DIY things that people are doing on their boats. Um, all kinds of conversations over on the members area. So you can always sign up for my patron. Uh, get access to the members area, private members area. And then uh, come hang out, chit chat, chat with me in real time. Chris, I've decided that I love to sail, but don't want to be the crew. <laughs> I mean, you can do it on a really, really small boat, Buck. You know, me doing like 29 footer. Me doing it on a Hobie. If you just want to get out and sail, you know, Hobie catamaran. Uh, why do you always skip the catch the catch rigs? It's the upkeep and maintenance. It's a pretty inefficient design compared to the modern day fractional rig sloop. Uh, as far as affordability and running costs, the fractional rib sloop is going to be much, much more reliable, efficient, and less running costs in the long run. Easier to sail solo, not needed for crew, whereas a lot of catches, especially once you go up inside, you're going to need crew. Running cost increases. They're kind of a nightmare. Came to the right place. What would be the best thing to take for seasickness... Uh, I've never been seasick gump mode, but I've been on boats with a lot of people that have been seasick. Like some of the people I showed you in the videos, uh, have been so seasick. I thought they were going to die. Like one guy spilled coffee and it like jolted his nerves. So he spilled the coffee pot, uh, from an instant cooker thingy while we were underway. And like that, like jolted his nerves and he got super, super seasick, but he was seasick for like 50 hours on a blue water passage with me where he was just stuck in the cockpit at the helm. He wasn't actually sailing or anything, but that was just the best place for him to sit. And he sat there and didn't move for like two days, uh, being sicker than heck. Another guy that you saw in the videos got so sick, but didn't want to tell anybody. So he was sitting down in the cabin, which will make you sicker. He threw all up all over the bathroom. But uh, some people have told me like smelling orange peels apparently a thing i guess dramamine some patches and stuff um so me personally i'm not sure dog should wear a bikini i agree 100 percent agree uh kp what's up my man good to see you catch rigs bring up a question my preferred sailing rig fractional rig sloop uh so here in the caribbean early sea nobody pays attention to that stuff that lives here full time uh because they know I know everybody else here knows it's 99.9% .9 media hype. Like when we get these storms, I don't even pay attention to them and I'm on a sailboat. I don't even pay attention to them. It's gotta be like a legitimate category three, four or five hurricane for me to even give it a second thought. I could care less about a one or a two, uh, down here on the islands. The only people that really move their boat for hurricane seasons are new sailors. Everybody else hangs out. Uh, and then like the work crew will switch back and forth. That's about it. You get lynched if you go to the boat show this year. Don't forget, I always choose violence. I wish somebody try. Not long time to talk. Stoked to see you. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm sailing all the time, dude. Uh, you did an awesome job tonight, Richard. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll look into two years. Yeah, for sure. Don't forget, ladies and gents. Super chats make the world do go round. Just do it. Yesterday you said tomorrow, so just. Do it! Super Chats. Uh, let me answer some questions.
questions here. I'm going to put it on the B-roll. Uh, right, before all right. we get into this, don't forget, oh. head on over ready. Hard to mount solar on a catch, true. Oh, is that, I can't pronounce that, but. Oh, uh, that's my private members area, Shane. You get it through the patron. Sign up for patron. You get the link. Go to the boat show and bring the posse. It's just my right arm, my left arm, my man. <laughs> get after it. <laughs> I mean, like, I've met all these people in person. Most of them. Nobody ever says anything to me in person. They wait till they get home. Early season, I'm guessing insurance goes up if you do move out of the hurricane zone. Uh, United States insurance notoriously early sea will make you uh, leave hurricane season which is why i always recommend getting insurance in the caribbean they don't really care that much they just want you to have an escape plan uh that's about it i think i've heard that somewhere too kp uh, kp says to stop motion like a Stop motion sickness i've heard wear earplugs because your brain gets info from your eyes and ears communicating to your brain or was it one, I'm not sure. Heard something like that. Like I said, I've never been sick. Um, Sailing Puhana says, best sea sickness prevention. Stay busy. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Waiting for my chat to catch up. Um, I'll answer your guys' recent questions. ABC says rates go up, coverage is dropped. All right, come on, chat. Let's go. Best seasick prevention, stay busy. The worst seasick I ever got was during sail chain stuffing sail bags up in bad weather. Racing around the island of Oahu, Hawaii. What would you do if Hurricane is headed to the Carolinas? Nothing. Uh, you have so much advance notice, Gerald. Uh, like my last delivery up to the Carolinas, there was a big, big front by the Mona Passage. Uh, I just sailed through it. We hit like 45 foot waves, 40 foot waves, 45 foot waves. But I had that Genoa 419 doing like 13, 14 knots surfing down those waves. Uh, I don't care really much about weather. Like I said, it's got to be like a legitimate, like full blown category three. This is what the storm is right now. Nowadays, they're naming everything Category 3s because of, like, one gust, where it used to be sustained. Now, it's like if they even get a gust, it's like, boom! Oh my gosh, it's a Category 5. I've been in Category 5s. I was in I was in a Hurricane Ermin in Key West in 2017, when it landed as a Category 5 and destroyed the Florida Keys. I was there, in the middle of it, getting emergency alerts on my phone, telling me I was going to die. Uh, mandatory evacuations. I was like, I'm not leaving. Um, so I don't pay much attention to storms. I know a lot of other people do. I've been so many hurricanes, neither here nor there. Got to be a legitimate, sustained three, four, or five for me to really care. Oh, no, he never, never would. The insurance different places. So in the United States of America, gut mode, there's really only two insurance companies. They're all going to use the same one, whether you go through like your local guy or progressive or Geico or something, it's all going to trickle down to the same people. Um, and they'll have different price recommendations or requirements for the East versus West coast. It's just kind of a nonsense game. They're playing. Don't go below deck. Yeah. Don't go below deck. If you're prone to seasickness, don't go down in the cabin, make you sick. Yep. Stay behind that. Yep. hundred percent agree. Yes, ABC game. Jamaicans never get seasick. They just take... Uh, <laughs> All right. Later, Scott. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Have you ever sailed across an ocean? Just how does, how does it work in insurance in the Caribbean? Do you have to be... Uh, no. No. Uh, you can... Um, like if you're going to be cruising the Caribbean full-time, uh, get insurance there and it'll cover you. Like if you go over to the States for a few months and stuff, it'll cover you. To stand at the helm of your destiny. 
That's awesome. I have video somewhere. Let me see here. A video of me in a hurricane somewhere. Let me see if it's on my YouTube or not. I want another meal in Paris. Excuse me. I want another bottle of wine. And then another. Rolling through my footage. Oh, look. The videos Lady K copied. 175K, 100K, 100K, 50K, how be? Son of a hoot. Uh, into this, don't this, forget, head on over to Red Patreon. Hurricane it's footage. only $10 a month, and you do get access to my private members area with hundreds and hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. Uh, where's it at? Where's my camera? We're going to find it. On land, I've been to the eye of fire. Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not recommending sailing through a Cat 5 or anything. I'm just saying Category 1 and 2 hurricanes, not that concerning to me. I don't get seasick. Yeah, that's what I hear too. Thanks, ABC. It's good to know about creepy insurance. Yeah, creepy insurance for sure. You're welcome. Thank you, Marines, boy. Where? Down here? Do they put on her? I mean, here I would just do like Fajardo or something. Um, There's a nice one. There's an okay. No. Uh. uh or the south side of the island. Okay, I'm gonna find these videos here somewhere. I just have a bunch of pages of videos to go through. Hold on. Ah! Don't forget to hit that like button, ladies and gentlemen. Even my stupid YouTube will load. Sometimes it's, uh, all right, I only got a few more pages to go here. Yeah, I'd probably do the like, south side of the island. Honestly. A bit further from the airport. You can do San Juan Bay Marina, but it's really packed there and it's expensive and you can never get a slip. So if a hard or a south side of the island is what I'd recommend. Oh my gosh, come on. Wait, no, no. Yeah, do south side of the island. <coughs> like I said, further from the airport, but whatever. Getting close. I can feel it in my bones. Huh. All right, here we go. I found it. This is after uh, Hurricane Irma in Key West. This is uh, Two Friends, right by Mallory Square. Keep in mind, none of this stuff's supposed to be underwater. This is a restaurant. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just me. <laughs> Only person out there tromping around in my bright neon shoes so I could be found in case I uh, die. <laughs> anyway. I have a bunch of footage from hurricanes. Uh, yeah, south side of the island, Fajardo. What's your opinion on ultra anchors? Neither here nor there. All anchors are pretty much the same, really. A lot of people go for those mantis anchors because uh, everybody says they're nice. In reality, stainless steel, stainless steel. Uh, so whichever is the cheapest. You're welcome. So insurance is actually give you a discount. So not really. No, no, they won't. Uh, they won't. They won't even take into account the ASA classes. And ASA classes are so expensive now, it's insane. Uh, you know. Yeah, they used to. Uh, but I mean, I, you know, I was sponsored by the ASA. I was the only person in the world 
sponsored by the ASA as a YouTuber that had a discount code to becoming a member of the ASA. And I actually canceled it because I didn't think it was the right route for people to go anymore. Uh, for that stuff. Now, if you're a member, a lot of times they have like these online classes that are good. Um, so, okay. So now they've done with the Vagabond what they tried to do with me, which was they wanted me to put out like all these videos, uh, pay for them. And then uh, they would give me a percentage people that bought them so they wanted me to do these ones these caribbean guides and i said no uh, so they've obviously now gone and tried to sucker some other people into it um but yeah so the 101 103 104 the 114 is for catarans these are very very expensive classes i've been sailing with people uh, I used to teach those classes. I've been sailing with people who have taken them recently. And I don't know what's changed in the time I taught them to what's going on now. But uh, I've had people on the boat who have taken those classes and they might as well know nothing. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I don't buy into the, the uh, ASA nonsense. Anymore. Talk to Troy about insurance. Yeah. It might help you get coverage, maybe. Keep in mind, for a 40-foot sailboat, your insurance is going to run you about four grand, roughly. A uh, buck? Yeah, I mean, I would think so, you know. Uh, I mean, it was cheaper then because it was a long, long time ago. And then I moved on to my 50-ton license. Uh... It used to be harder to get the six pack. It used to have a, a lot of a lot more water time, more recent than three years. But uh, now they've dumbed it down. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to call it. We have been streaming for seven, eight, nine, ten, three hours. Wow. So, everybody, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Really, really appreciate you. Don't forget uh, thumbs up, leave comments, all that good stuff. It really, really helps the videos. Appreciate you guys all coming and hanging out with me. Um, if you'd like me to live stream more often, just after I get done with this one, go back to the video post in the comments uh, that you would like me to live stream more often. I'd be happy to set up something like maybe every Sunday or every Saturday or every Tuesday or whatever at like a certain time uh, to live stream. You know, maybe we can get some sort of uh, like criteria down and people can submit questions and stuff early for me. Uh, then I can go through everybody's questions on the live stream with them at like a certain time every week. Maybe do something like that. Uh, so think about that. If you think that's a good idea, post in the comments after this video gets done. Um, thanks, Scott Mode. I appreciate it. Early C, thank you so much. ABC, thank you. Jot, thank you. Buck, thank you. Bearded Weirdo, thank you. Thank you, everybody who super chatted. Tom, thank you so much. Again, thanks, everybody who super chatted. That really, really helps keep the channel alive going kirk thank you so much appreciate it Denine, thank you so much Kristen, thank you thank you thank you you guys enjoy your weekend be safe um maybe i'll live stream next week all right thank you guys so much appreciate it i'll catch you guys in the next one thank you expo prog appreciate it